Hi. Hello. It's been a while since I've done a special episode, but here we are again. It's a Passive Pixel special episode. Um, once again, I'm telling myself to edit something that's more than the episode, and I'm kind of hoping this one doesn't go three hours. Now, this time I decided to pull someone from from America, thankfully, this time. I can't really deal speaking with mooses for that long. Uh, I have brought in <laughs> Maple. Maple, how are you, man? Hey, man. Uh, I'm doing great. I know my name is Maple, so... Um... People are going to assume I'm Canadian or something, but I, I, nope. you're right. You're right. That actually is kind of <laughs> damn. We, yeah. it's been not even a minute and we already got the signature. Nope. My God. Nope. I almost feel like we can end it right now. You know, that's, I feel like that was <laughs> enough content. <laughs> uh, you see, I was uh, going to go good, Edwin. into a different direction with geography. You know, I wanted to make a joke mm -hmm. about the fact that the only two PVP locations in the U S are the two States that we live in, right? Texas and Florida. Oh yes, so, exactly. Now we all know, that within these states you really need to watch out you know uh, it's not quite like new york new york which obviously is what we're gonna be talking about a little later with spider-man you know new york not exactly a place you have a gun on often and if it is it's probably because it's not there legally but <laughs> texas and florida you know you carry that on you and it's completely fine no one really questions it it's the wild west here in florida and in, and well i haven't lived in texas but i assume texas is the same thing one of my favorite videos about having a gun in texas is when someone tried to pull it on a church one dude was about to start shooting people and then eight people in the congregation all were packing and took him down just an amazing amazing story here about the country we live in um <laughs> but that wouldn't happen like literally uh, the next state over but in texas it'll happen <laughs> happen but yeah it's just a great usa in texas obviously this the shit is just a tuesday everywhere texas, else it's a yeah. it's a twitter storm yeah it's what it's right. what foreigners think like the u.s is this texas is what it actually is you know how like foreigners think like the u.s is this like wild west where everybody's shooting each other and of course fat and they love like cheeseburgers and that's literally what texas is you know it doesn't apply to the whole that state. is absolutely accurate yeah yeah <laughs> i hear there are people that are skinnier out of texas but to be fair i don't know those people all right mm. <laughs> <laughs> so of course title already been seen it's not like there's exactly a surprise or anything the topic is going to be spider-man into the spider-verse now i had a couple of different factors leading me to want to watch this um, i mean the most recent time i don't mean in theaters i recently finished installing true atmos speakers in my theater room i put ceiling speakers in and i wanted to watch something that would obviously test them out spider-verse kind of came up short with that but that's literally the only time i'm going to say that spider-verse came short in at all in this episode so i decided to watch that i enjoyed it very thoroughly and then with being reminded about the fact that there is a sequel coming up it, it felt right you know and I kind of hate saying it felt right because I'm pretty sure whenever most people say that shit, it's like, oh, well, the search engine optimization will obviously I don't give a shit about that. OK, I know that P seven people are listening to this. That's OK. I've accepted that long ago. April, did, have you did you watch it leading up to this? Because if not, no worries. It wasn't really a, <laughs> a necessity. I actually did. I watched like half of it yesterday i'm just leading up to it and then something came up was this your first time watching it no 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 this is probably okay. third or fourth okay okay so you've watched this before great mm -hmm. oh yes no no i love this movie this is one that honestly i'd probably say is maybe top four superhero movies and i don't really let's see dark knight logan infinity war this one maybe spider-man 2 sneaks in but like this is somewhere at the top where it's like I'd probably take this over a huge amount of other superhero movies. This might be the best movie ever made, ever. Right? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was about no, to say, but... like, oh man, I've been on a roll with other movies right now. But if we want to go there, like, you know what? Fuck it. We're just gonna start... we're gonna no. heighten it then. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I just start like over exaggerating. No, but this is definitely. I think. I think this is the easily uh, my favorite Spider-Man movie. Oh, same. Uh, to be fair, like I haven't watched two in a while, mm. so I might need to rewatch two. But no, this is easily far and away probably the best Spider-Man movie I've ever seen. You know, leading up to um, watching it, I remember in 2018 when it first came out, it was getting crazy reviews. I saw the reviewers just hyping it up so much. And in my head, I'm like, damn, like, this looks really cool. I got to watch it. And this was like one of the few exceptions where I go into a movie expecting a lot 
and then mm-hmm. it exceeds like every expectation I had. You know, mm-hmm. I get bored with movies really easily. Like I just do. It's just who I am. I just get really bored. You got to grab my attention somehow. And I think from the moment it starts, it just hooks you in every yes. single frame. I don't. I don't think I was bored one time in this movie. I think the ending, like the end fighting sequence, might have been a little too long mm. or a little. Just just my opinion. But other than that, man, I was hooked on the entire way. I I love this movie so much. I've watched it multiple times. It's rare for a movie to be a classic this late into my life. You know what I mean? Yes. And this, yeah, it's just really rare, like to say, oh, this movie's a classic. Like this, especially in in this far in, like in my life. And I'm like, yeah, this. Yeah. As soon as I watched it and the credits rolled, I'm like, yeah, this is easily like a classic. And it's just one of those movies, man. What about you? What's uh, what's your history with it when you first watched it? All that jazz. So, not going to lie. When I saw the trailers, I was thinking, ooh, ooh, I don't know how I feel about this. Like, this looks like it's going to be a mess. I mean, keep in mind that Spider-Man 3 exists. And, like, Spider-Man 3, mm. I enjoy it for ironic reasons i'm not gonna ever say it's a good movie but damn is it fun as hell because it just sucks right Mm -hmm. now spider-man having a history of too many villains whenever i saw into the spider-verse trailers i was like okay so instead of doing too many villains now you're gonna have too many spider-man and just i'm not gonna care and honestly that was probably my mistake for not realizing that blessed be chris lord and phil miller understand how to handle a movie uh because this movie, when I remember going to watch it in theaters, I was really thinking, I was like, okay, you know what? People are saying that this is good. I'm probably going to go in arms crossed. There's no way that there's no way that you're going to tell me this movie is somehow going to be better than Infinity War. It took over, what, 20 movies for them to get to this point, And we're getting a huge payoff. And you're telling me that a movie in like hour and 40 is going to give me almost the exact same feelings. And I remember walking out thinking, huh, well, I'm really fucking stupid, aren't I? Um, <laughs> Spider-Verse is such an immaculate film that... I still don't exactly understand what exactly that's the thing. I'm going to pin this all on Chris Lord and Phil Miller because of other reasons that I'll get into. But I think those two guys just understand dork shit so much better than anyone else because they kind of understand that you don't need to be super reverent to what you're doing. You just need to understand it, know how to make fun of it, and then expose what makes that so special. Now, I never saw 21 Jump Street, the TV show. I Well, I did play with Lego, so I guess that's another one. And then we have Spider-Man, which I don't really think I have that much nostalgia for. It's Spider-Man is like Batman. like Everyone just likes him. It's kind of easy to point that out. Mm-hmm. But whenever I look at 21 Jump Street, how the hell did they take a... 80s adaption of a tv show that most people only really care about because johnny depp was there and make it one of the best comedies of the teens how do you Mm. take 22 jump street and you make it literally one of the only good comedy movies sorry one of the only good comedy sequels to exist Mm. how do you take spider-man and make fun of him how do you take spider-man and celebrate what makes him so special how do you make it somehow palpable for both adults and kids and everyone in between and everyone just kind of gets yeah this is the essence of spider-man even when they're making fun of him whenever they do like the the recap of raimi at the very beginning of the movie Mm -hmm. i don't understand how this movie is allowed to function as well as it is because it's honestly impossible that somehow they went to do 21 Jump Street and did all that. They did Spider-Man this, and then even they took the Lego movie. They took what was supposed to be a 90-minute ad and made you remember why Legos are so fucking cool. I cannot fathom how is it that this movie works as well as it should because it should not. Man, that's I don't know if I could even top what you just said because you just <laughs> said a lot. And it's like everything you said is just absolutely on point. Now, I'm not too familiar. I did look up the directors at one point. Um, mm-hmm. Do you know if they're directing the sequel? I have no idea, but honestly, just because I know 22, oh, sorry, 21 and 22 Jump Street and Lego Movie, I feel like because those guys have left their fingerprint so deeply on this, 
I don't know how important the directors are to this one because like that's a thing there's something about the tone of this movie that just feels so much like that irreverence that sort of ability to take everything seriously and then at the same time kind of go no not really and yet still be a compelling movie so right I so, so like okay, go for it. yeah i was gonna ask are these the the two people you're talking about phil are they the writers or the directors or who would they so be? they I think they were the producers, um, at least for the first one. Uh, What I see for the sequel is that they wrote the screenplay, so that actually gives me a lot of faith in the sequel. Okay, so they do have their fingerprints on the the sequel. Because I was about to say, what you just said just made a lot of sense, and I don't know if if a sequel would work without them, since much like a lot of the the movie's um, charm is in its smart and witty and funny and this ability to just keep you hooked and, and not treat the audience like it's stupid. Like, I remember mm-hmm. watching it, and what was it? Like, I think it was the scene in the lab with Doc Ock, right? Yeah. There was just something what that was just so funny to me where I think he was looking at the uh, – uh, Miles was looking at the uh, computer or something, and he talked the about desktop. like fu- – Yeah, I was like talking about like desktop organization or some shit. Like, it, <laughs> oh, oh, my God. I cursed. I'm sorry. You could, you could take that out. He was talking yeah, about like no, desktop. I, I've been cursing a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. 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 Good. <laughs> no, no, completely well, speak freely as you'd like. It was like some very obscure nerdy joke, right? That I don't think normal people would get, but it was just, well, I don't know about that, but it was just something where like every, like people could relate to it, but the nerds like could get a laugh out of it. I was like, oh, that's actually kind of smart. Like he's not, they're not assuming the audience is stupid. And there's a lot of moments like that in, in Spider-Verse, which which just makes me adore the film. Like it's just so funny and it's, it's jokes are very smart and it's just very engaging. I just, everything about this movie is just, just crazy to me. I remember watching the trailer too. And to be honest at the time, I know you, you, you thought it did look like kind of, you were a little scared because, because of uh, the history with Spider-Man, not everybody could do it. Well, this, that, and the third for me, what the problem is, is that watching that entire style kind of reminded me of the 2003 Hulk. Did you ever see that movie? Uh, I think I, did yeah was it the live action one yeah uh yeah. the first one yeah. with eric banna and that yes That's the thing. yes that movie is such a fucking mess because they yeah. try to do like a comic book feel to it and it's a mess where you have people jumping out towards the screen and it looks you remember austin powers where that person's mm-hmm. going into that time machine and they like pose and then it spins them out it right. looked like that in hulk except they were doing it seriously it's like oh no mm-hmm. honey you shouldn't be you should never look at austin powers and go yeah but what if we did that seriously yeah yeah for sure <laughs> um I and that's and that's a fair point. I think when I saw the Spider Man, well, you got to remember too. We were getting off. That was the same studio. I think at the at the time it was just what was it? Sony. Sony Pictures, which honestly I will Sony always Pictures look at them and get really mad about the fact that they do like the fucking Smurfs. It's like how do you go from the Smurfs to this? Not even that. It was Sony Pictures Animation, which they had just come off the Emoji Movie, if you remember that. And oh that my was god, it. you're right. That's why people had a problem. I remember I had because I, I saw that logo in the beginning of the trailer in 2018. I'm like, wait these are the people doing this one like at this spider-man movie and i was just that's what made me like kind of skeptical at first but then you got to remember there's directors and writers and all that stuff that were completely different than the emoji movie Mm -hmm. yeah and man i'll be honest when i first saw the trailer i was like i had never seen an art style like that um like some 3d animation shit like that i have never seen that before in a movie so i was like what what the fuck is this this looks really really cool um Hmm. i just enjoyed the trailer i thought it looked cool just based off the animation and laws like this is really unique Hmm. i wasn't excited per se like i watched the trailer i was like oh this is cool oh but it's Hmm. it's by the people who made the emoji movie and then i that's that was kind of it i was like (laughs) that that was literally my thought process like uh it's probably gonna be ass or it's gonna probably be like 50 metacritic or something whatever Mm -hmm. and then it comes out and everybody's raving about this movie everyone everyone and i'm like what the hell they can't be that good and then i go watch it by myself i think it's like like a little bit later and Mm. then i was just blown away man i was just blown away i don't know what it was it was just i was in the theater seat i was the i think it was like the only three people 2018 was that COVID? no it wasn't COVID. no (laughs) oh my god it feels like it though (laughs) yeah i know right it was not COVID times it was just late i saw it later so the theater was kind of empty and i was just in there like what the fuck this is so amazing and uh, i think i watched it twice and i just told my friends of like this movie's crazy like this movie's great 
it's like this is an animated movie and i'm like yeah but it's like it's like amazing it's not like a kid's movie or whatever like Mm -hmm. um yeah man and i don't know it's it's (laughs) that's my history with spider-verse and i've just watched it multiple times since then you know to be honest i don't think anybody has watched spider-verse what like one time has only watched it one time i'm pretty sure they've watched it a couple times like it's just that type of movie hell i'm just gonna say that even if that's not true i'm pretty sure this is a movie that if someone just says hey do you did you watch spider-verse there already is gonna be at least one scene that kicks into their memory and to be fair that's honestly one of the best biggest compliments that you can give to a movie the fact that it actually stays in your mind after you finish watching it man, yeah just... man i have to agree there's a multiple scenes in my head i mean we could just jump right into i think when when i saw when spider-man dies the the, the first one Ooh. Yeah, I remember being like kind of this. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I was like, I think that's everybody's reaction, but I don't know. Yeah. It, it was just out of nowhere. It's like, what the fuck? What kind of movie is this? There's death in this movie? Like, that's the yeah. that's one of the first things. Because um, cause you don't know what to expect. You really don't know what to expect watching Spider-Verse for the first time. You don't know. Um, mm-hmm. You're like, what kind of movie is this? How is it getting so much attention? And I guess the beginning starts it off. And then the editing starts it off where it's like, oh, this is really fast paced, fast cut. Dude, um, no, from the moment that it started. The yeah. fact that even the logos start glitching, like the yeah. fact that the logo started glitching, that was the oh moment where I was like, I was sitting in theaters, like, wait, are they, are they doing something? That, that no, there's no way that I'm gonna end up taking this seriously. There's no fucking way. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. the music started kicking in, and then you had the whole comic book opening where it's like, this is Spider Man, and I want to say the moment that they did the Spider Man dance, where it's like, yeah, we don't talk about that. Mm-hmm. I think the movie in like two minutes won me over almost immediately. Where I was disarmed, like I had my arms crossed, and as soon as I heard the music, get on up, I was like, okay, you know what, you know what, fine. You have you you did your shot. I I'm I'm vulnerable. Let me yeah, go, movie. Where are you going? It doesn't wait to hook you in. It and to be honest, as soon as the movie starts and it show, that whole intro sequence, you kind of know like okay, this is this type of movie. Like it is self aware. It is. It's yeah. not gonna try to be this this. I don't know serious like, thing. Yeah, very serious. Thing. It knows what it is and it's making references and it's proud about it and it's, it's visually appealing and it's hooking me in. And when they showed that, uh, uh, when they showed that low quality JPEG on that big ass movie screen, bro. Oh I was, my God. I think that's when I lost it. I was like, or like that was like, <laughs> holy shit. Like they're just okay. They're just doing this, I guess. It's like a low quality ice cream JPEG. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just, it, it hooks you in from the start. And then Spider Man dies, and then you're like, "What the fuck? Like, what? What is this? What is this movie? How could this? Where is this going? Like, how?" Honestly, the balls to kill off Spider Man in a kids movie. I have mm-hmm. no idea how the hell they let this get greenlit, like at mm-hmm. all. Because mm-hmm. Sony, to me, is also the studio that was like, "Oh man, we're losing the rights to Spider Man. Amazing Spider Man One, Amazing Spider Man Two. Like, this isn't exactly a smart studio." So I have no idea. <laughs> how they ha- like that's the thing killing spider-man in a spider-verse movie is smart as hell because you get to have your cake and eat it you get to kill spider-man and you still get more spider-man so like mm-hmm. i still have no idea how the hell they convinced whichever the suit was in charge of this to be like yeah no no, no we're gonna kill spider-man in a kid's movie and have them not immediately go get the fuck out of my office right now if you ever say that shit again i'm firing you <laughs> right it's not like the killing was some sort of thing they just breezed by no you had to feel that he was dead for yeah. a good 10 minutes minutes they had everybody showing up at his funeral they had the things on the tv you act you as an audience member felt like holy you felt like everyone else was feeling in the movie where it's like what the fuck yeah. holy shit and a lot of it has to do i feel like with the sound and the music in the movie they kick in at just the right times the soundtrack oh. first of all the soundtrack of the movie is amazing right and yes. they knew see with a lot of these, when when studios go out sometimes to to make a uh, a hip hop soundtrack or something where it's like they fuck it up, yeah, they fuck it up badly and they end up putting features like people together that don't mesh well together just because they're popular, right? Because especially mm-hmm. with me, I listen to a lot of hip hop, and most of these soundtracks, these hip hop soundtracks for movies, are absolutely trash. Um, mm-hmm. and I remember looking at the sound list for uh, or the soundtrack for Spider Verse. And it was like, what the, f- like, whoever did this knew exactly what they were doing. Man, a lot of this movie's hook and enjoyment comes from the sound design and the sound cues and the, 
and the music and even not even from the soundtrack like artist soundtrack it was the actual score yeah i meant like from the there's a lot of score like they know when to put certain sounds where which hooks you in right away like you said mm-hmm. in the beginning when it ramps up like this digital glitchy little sound in the beginning where you know what i mean like and the music yeah. starts to swell up it's just i don't know man the, the the sound designers or whoever was in charge of that shit also did a phenomenal job that's also one of the things that carries like the movie for me one of my favorite things sonally about this movie that i caught this time was the fact that you remember the well, of course who doesn't forget the leap of faith whenever the string sections kick in there i realized that that was the theme the entire movie the entire movie will have like a spider-man moment and it'll go and i realized that the entire movie kept muting that throughout the runtime and it wasn't until the leap of faith that that string section finally gets to kick in hard and if there's something i love i love whenever you have reoccurring motifs in music and honestly the leap of faith i I don't even want to get there (laughs) i just wanted to point out that like the music there as well as helping the narrative that even afterwards it just stays that exact same energy all the way to the end what i did want to jump back to was spider-man's death because god you were not wrong i forgot how long it lingers on his death because like that's the thing even though kingpin like just smacks the hell out of him and murders him i think spider-man already knew he was gonna die by the time he was talking to miles so i feel like that hits even harder on each rewatch because you know spider-man is just like i can't let this kid freak out i know i'm going to die i know that after this, Kingpin is probably going to have full reign, and this kid is literally the only chance that New York has to be able to stop him. And he's just spitting out every single last thing that he can do to impart, like, just spider wisdom to him. And, oh my god, it's so painful, and then not only is he dead, the movie then goes, yeah, by the way, all of New York is just going to show, yeah, he's dead now. All of you now have to just wallow in this. Basically, all of New York just mourning him. And then you get to see Stan Lee just Stan Lee was that. Hold on. Stan Lee did die, I think, in 2018. So seeing him in Spider-Verse was like this extra level of him. Just like he was giving his final stamp. And oh, that in tandem with the fact that Spider-Man just dies like it is something that hits harder than I don't even think that they originally thought of. I I have to wholeheartedly agree because I remember watching that scene and especially the cameo. And I was like, holy shit, like this is just extra sad at that point. Yeah. I don't know how you could do a death that is better than the way they did in any animated movie. I don't know. They had everybody show it. it, There's just this sense of unity, right? Or, Or this like, it's like where everyone's affected and and you you're yeah. you as a viewer you're affected you know who spider-man is you grew up yeah. with spider-man who doesn't know what spider-man is and to see him die you're like what the hell because you know miles people know okay miles morales but they don't expect that oh spider-man's going to get killed off for miles morales to shine they might mm-hmm. think hey i think especially in the promo material you didn't even know he was gonna die you thought the spider-man yeah. that was with him is the same spider-man from the beginning of the film because yeah. in the trailers you, you know they show him like him swinging i think or they show clips of him swinging with with the with spider-man you don't know that's a different one that's that's from another universe yeah that's peter um, b parker not peter a parker yeah correct it's insane like how they subvert your expectations and they do it over and over in the movie that wasn't the first time you were shocked and but it was definitely the most probably impactful moment other than probably another scene in the movie just a greatly executed death all right <laughs> just a yeah. very impactful death uh in that movie in that that particular scene man so i want to bring it to miles because we already at least brought him up miles to me i am actually ridiculously impressed at how quickly they made me relate to him i just i even wrote it down i put almost immediate relatability with music singing parents not packing i mean it's almost like a minute or two where you just already have so many things that are put into this kid that you just kind of go yeah you know what I like him. It's just the smallest things. It's him just kind of wordlessly trying to sing a song that he obviously doesn't know the lyrics to. He's getting berated by his dad to pack because he doesn't want to go to school. He has his mom being just a little too close to him in like the almost most Hispanic way possible. Just 
all of this, I was so impressed at how immediately it just shortcutted me into thinking, yeah, you know what? I like this kid. I want to root for this kid. And then they just keep ramping it up. He goes out and he starts tagging all everything that he can find. And it's just something that he doesn't do with like any malice. He does it with joy. He just is a kid that loves the art. And I think he just wants to share it. You then top it off with the fact that his dad picks him up. He's embarrassed by it. And then the whole scene of, I love you. Say dad, I love you. Like I, there is so much about Miles Morales in like the first few minutes that I was impressed at how quickly I was just immediately on board for him. I have to agree. I don't have Hispanic parents. I know you're Hispanic, so I, you probably <laughs> related. You probably related right away. But with me, it's like, yeah, I have I have foreign parents as well, and and they're a little traditional, or more family oriented. So I related right away with with his mother. You know, being too close to him and 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 making and she kisses him and says goodbye, yes. and you know what I mean. That was instantly something relatable for me as well. They show the Nike, and they it's not some generic Nike shoe. It's yes. actually a shoe people respect. Yeah, it's like a a shoe that people actually know of, and it's not. They they actually did some research into things in this movie, the culture and and everything, and yeah, I think it just shows from right away that he's cultured, and you know the the, the part with the, with his dad where he's kind of dismissing him at first when he's in the cop car and stuff, and it's just that stuff is relatable for me as well it's like okay when you're at that age you're kind of embarrassed because you know your dad's taking you to school and you want to speed up because you know you don't want to see your your friends seeing you ride or whatever with your parents or whatever that was all relatable for me at least and then doubly so the fact that his dad is a cop in new yeah. york and you're just like yeah. and that's the thing you you can tell the neighborhood he's in you're just like yeah maybe you don't want to be seen with your cop dad in a cop mm -hmm. car mm-hmm Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And the fact that he likes tagging and it's a good dichotomy between his dad being a cop and him, you know, liking his, mm -hmm. his thing. And then it leads us right into the uncle yes. where he's just the complete opposite of his father. And, you know, to be fair, I missed this part. We're going to get to it later, mm -hmm. but I don't know why I could have completely missed the part where he uses his uncle. Right. Mm -hmm. So my brain should have put two and two together and be like, okay. <laughs> His uncle is going to die because he is Spider Man. Like I don't know, I'll, you know, what I mean? he's no, not Spider Man, okay. I guess. But I'll join you know. in being dumb. I never thought that honestly. Like I just kind yeah. of assumed, oh, Miles Morales, not Peter Parker. That's okay. Yeah, exactly. I didn't expect him to die, but there's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense. His uncle, his uncle dies just like every other Spider Man. And then <sighs> um, let's just start from where they show him and his uncle in his uncle's apartment God. and man he's teaching him how to like pick up chicks and stuff and telling him how to do that hey gesture and uh, you know miles is like pretending he's talking to somebody hey. all that is relatable it's just so it's just so funny because it's you can see how innocent miles is and he's like a good kid or whatever and he's not trying to and his uncle's a little bit different dude just watching that entire scene made me so happy because i love the fact that you have just immediately before that you have the scene of his dad just embarrassing him in front of all of his new potential friends he's had a rough day and what does he do he goes to see his uncle aaron and his uncle aaron is like just straight up a completely other end direction from his dad that because you know that miles was so embarrassed by his dad you were suddenly all the way 100 percent in aaron's camp because he is treating miles not like a kid like he's actually willing to look him in the eye he actually wants to talk to him about his day because that's the thing it like his dad at the beginning of this movie does not seem like the warm and comforting type. I mean, you have Miles, who obviously is shooken uh, when he sneaks back into his bedroom, and he, like, shakily asks, like, Dad, do you really hate Spider-Man? And his dad is just not reading the situation at all. He just goes, well, yeah, of course I hate Spider-Man. And, like, his mom can tell, like, hey, you know, roll it back a little. Like, mm -hmm. you can tell almost immediately the differences that are between these two people. And honestly, one of the favorite things that I like that, okay, so I'm going to be pulling in the game for a second because the Miles Morales game actually has something in it that I love. There's a scene where Miles is talking to Uncle Aaron and they're both talking about how they had this beef between them, but they both like still just kind of knew if we needed to, we'll come together. But until then, there's just fundamental differences between us that we just can't bridge. 
And what I love is that even though this movie doesn't do that, it still hints it enough that if you know about the beef that those two had, it is right there. And there's mm. something about that just fucking speaks to me because I love it whenever you can see these two characters that just will not stand each other just as they are as people. But if it comes to a certain importance, which when Miles disappears from basically wherever people can report on him, his dad calls Aaron and is like, hey, listen, I know I you care about Miles like I do. I tell him not to hang out with you, but he still does. If you see him, please tell me. And that's just honestly one of my favorite scenes in the movie as well. I mean, to be fair, I, I can't really say that because if not, I'd say that about the whole movie. But that yeah. is a standout scene to me where you have him swallow his pride because you know that he loves Miles enough to do that for him. Yeah, it's a lot of heart. That is something I think that a lot of people go through. They always, I mean, I, I would speak for myself. There's always this one uncle where, you know, your father talks about, it's like, yeah, we don't really get along this, that, and the third. But you know, at the end of the day, when it's a, Maybe it's it's some sort of special event, or when when a relative passes, or something. They're they're together and they're hugging and they're you know there's something there that connects them at the end of the day, uh, whether mm-hmm. it be a family member, a relative, or the history, right? They just sometimes yeah. some people just go on different paths, and uh, you know there's history there, so you're not gonna just ignore them. And it, just, it takes a lot of heart. I mean, it shows that they're human at the end of the day, right? Because yeah, it takes a robot to really block someone off i feel right you never really i feel like especially if someone like as a relative that you've lived for all your life yeah you go on separate ways or whatever but unless they did something really really crazy to you i don't think you could just ignore a person or or just cut them off completely you understand so uh, hmm. that just really showed the human side of his father and i uh that was just a just a great scene as well yeah i agree uncle aaron though like i feel like so of course i knew nothing about miles morales like i really just barely know anything about comics because comics suck right uh yeah <laughs> so exactly. uncle aaron being the prowler was something that threw me right off balance because like you already have uncle ben you have uncle ben who tragically dies but then you have uncle aaron who's basically the person that sets himself up for death in this movie which i think think actually probably makes it more painful because obviously there's still that guilt that spider-man always has about his uncle dying this is kind of taken to another level where it becomes more complicated where it's like yeah uncle aaron kind of did set himself up to be killed here because he did work with kingpin but it's also like well yeah but if miles if you weren't spider-man he probably wouldn't have gotten shot because he would have been still doing his job whatever kingpin required so right the uncle aaron is just someone that i love his inclusion in this movie because he is that good grounding force for miles he's that good family connection that he needs that's the thing you always have your parents right they will always be the ones that are trying to help you as much as you can if you have good parents if you have shitty parents Mm -hmm. i'm so sorry um (laughs) so but there's always kind of like this level of distance where it's like i don't know if i can exactly give you a couple of things and that's where you have different family members where it's like i can trust you with certain things i don't feel comfortable giving my parents and that's uncle aaron to miles miles can talk to uncle aaron about girls at school because he doesn't feel comfortable talking about it with his mom his dad definitely isn't exactly a man who knows how to be able to talk to his son until the end of the movie so Uncle Aaron fits this nice spot in his life that just makes it even harder once Miles realizes that he's the Prowler and he's the person who has tried to kill him like at least once or twice by this point in the movie. Yeah, it's such a backstab that scene just is very heartbreaking because you know Miles looks up to this dude and Mm -hmm. and to realize that yeah this has been his uncle the whole time uh, you know you could feel miles's emotion and yeah i mean about you you know you saying there's just some stuff you just can't talk to certain people about and it's just how it is it's just either the relationship that doesn't mean you don't love them or or any of that yeah you you can't just talk to your parents about this or that sometimes it's uh it's just the relationship that's being that was it's almost a level of uncomfortability where it's like i don't yeah. really want to bring up this topic to you there are just some family members that you feel more comfortable telling stuff more than others and it's not anything about them specifically it's just like you had said it's that relationship that you have with them and that prior knowledge in your past that kind of makes you feel comfortable with certain people telling them this info but not other info yeah absolutely i mean i just that was uncle aaron i think for 
for everybody in the audience, they're like, they always have, of course there's, you know, there's, there's a meme where not a meme, but like, there's this thing where it's like, Oh, that's the uncle that passes out cigarettes to the kids at the, (laughs) at the, at the little function, you know, it's like, Oh yeah, here, have this. Or he passes you like a beer or something here. Don't tell your parents that there's always that one uncle. So that's the uncle that sticks out with the teens outside of Thanksgiving and come back (laughs) really hungry with like a slightly bigger plate than you expect. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it was like, it, it was just instantly, relatable and could feel it's just yeah now i really like that you have this scene because hell we need to probably talk about the downstairs scene where he goes into the basement which funnily enough when i watched the second time i was like oh wait the reason he knows about this is because he's working for kingpin he's down there because kingpin's machine is down there Mm -hmm. so that was always fun uh looking back at it but the entire spray paint scene feels like a full-on culmination of just showing you that uncle aaron just kind of understand miles more and honestly that's just kind of how it goes like it always seems like whenever people have kids they have a sibling whenever they have their first kid it's always something reminiscent of either their dad who they don't get along with or their sibling that they don't get along with and this feels kind of like an encapsulation of that uncle aaron just kind of knows that miles likes tagging so he's like hey i got a cool spot Miles is obviously already stressed from being to having to move over into this new school. And then you have Uncle Aaron being like, nah, man, look, I'm going to give you something that feels like home because obviously you're in that school. You're not comfortable. I need to remind you that even though you're going through this, you still have me to rely on, which then makes the rest of the movie painful because he, Uncle Aaron's gone for almost all of it. Like he's out there doing Prowler shit. So like, Miles can't reach him, which means that he is relying on all these Spider-Men for him to not only grow up, but to be able to become the defender that New York needs. Absolutely. And that's another thing where it subverts your expectations, where it's like, okay, he's his uncle, but he's also the prowler. So now you're not even thinking about, oh, this person might die. Now you're thinking, how is this going to pan out between Spider-Man and Miles? Are they going to at the end, are they going to battle it or battle it out and, and they're going to make up or something? Or Because I think the movie starts to build this thing between Miles and his uncle where you think they're going to ultimately duke it out at the end, right? Or something. Or, mm-hmm. or there's going to be some resolution to this problem. And no, he just dies midway through the movie. Yeah. And that's another way they subvert, just absolutely subvert the expectations. Because, yeah, it's like, oh, shit, he's the prowler and he's my uncle. Oh, shit, he actually just dies. Okay, now, all right, that's another layer that you did not see coming. The easy way out of this movie was making the Prowler the final big bad. Mm -hmm. They fight, and then he reveals Mm -hmm. that he's Miles, and then Prowler just goes, Damn you, Spider-Man, we'll get you for the sequel! Like, Mm -hmm. like that's the easy way out. But Mm -hmm. no, this movie goes... No, we're going to commit to this, okay? Yes, he's the Prowler. Yes, he is a villain that's integral to Miles' story. We're going to kill him because it is what this story needs. You need to have Kingpin be put over even further as a son of a bitch, okay? He killed Spider-Man, and you still need something extra to show that Kingpin is a terrible person, okay? Okay. That Kingpin is out here shooting a man with no hesitation, I might add, because, like, that's the thing. Prowler only has, like, maybe two or three seconds where he puts down Miles, and then, boom, there's the gunshot. Which, honestly, like, I was shocked, because you would have thought that you would have had at least one establishing shot of, like, Kingpin kind of mean mugging for a second. Like, oh, God, I'm gonna have to kill this guy. Nope, you have... Uncle Aaron put down Miles, a couple of beats on his face, boom. And all you see at the other end is Kingpin holding the gun. Like, I couldn't believe the fact that they actually let Kingpin be such a psychopath that he has a kill count of two by the end of this PG movie. That's one of the the big things. You think like, hey, this is a a kid's movie, quote unquote, right? And then they kill off Spider-Man in the beginning. And then... You're like, oh, shit, that was really, like, unexpected and, you know, cool or whatever. What the fuck? What kind of movie is this? And mm-hmm. by that time, you you start thinking, well, if that was it. I mean, that was, they can't really, they're not really going to kill anybody else off besides maybe a villain that, you know, we don't care yeah. about or whatever. So you're like, Two yeah. Two right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you're like, well, 
well, people don't really die in Spider-Man movies like that. I mean, like unless not <laughs> unless by, you're an uncle. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and not by Spider-Man's hand. So you're thinking, okay, so we had the first big death of the movie. You don't expect another death because you're like, okay, that's probably all they could do for this movie. It might be too much if they add more death scenes for people we care about. Nope, mm-hmm. they keep doing it. And Kingpin, yeah, he's the one that that kills everybody. I guess you're you're right. But then Kingpin has stuff of his own where they start Ooh. to bring up his past and why he's doing what he's doing, and it tries to humanize Kingpin. But I don't think I think it's one of the things where it's like, okay, I still don't. I don't think it still warrants what he's doing. I don't think that it's exactly humanizing. I think it was just explaining what was his driving force and yeah. why he was so insane, even willing to risk basically all of New York being tossed into a black hole for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, by the way, I feel like I have to mention that scene with Kingpin because whenever you're watching a movie, you're in it. You're not really stopping to think, oh, man, look at this choice right here, this choice right here. I was impressed by the fact that Kingpin's explanation for everything is basically done almost wordless. It is done through like flashes of a screen and you just understand everything in like under a minute of why he is willing to go to these links, which honestly, it makes you realize that he is even a fucking worse person because if you subscribe to the multiverse theory that this movie has, that obviously there's like a Spider-Man in each one, that means there's a kingpin in each one, which means that this kingpin is such an asshole that he is taking his wife and kid from a different kingpin. Like, he mm. understands the gravity of this, and yet he is still mm. such a fucking terrible person that he's like, think about no, that. no, 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 no. I need my wife and kid. Fuck that other kingpin. My wife and kid now. Which, honestly, it's what makes his end so satisfying. Because not only does he not get his family back, he also is shown to be choking Miles. Which means that not only did his wife and kid die knowing that kingpin was an asshole every single wife and kid in the multiverse now knows that kingpin is an asshole in every single universe which means that he probably accidentally got every single kingpin divorced in every universe good job kingpin your fucking punishment was terrible and just i have to agree i mean you know i never really thought of it that way where he's actually stealing his wife and kids from another kingpin even though he knows what it's gonna do to yep. to the other one i mean what's to, who's to say like if he doesn't take them back like that might start this multi-dimensional <laughs> universe war where every single kingpin is now doing the same shit and fucking everything up you know uh um, so yeah, for I, spider-verse 3 we're gonna have kingpin, kingpin wars okay war, kingpin war. <laughs> yeah it's, it's just a bunch of kingpins doing the same shit because everybody's stealing their wife and kids uh, over and over i never thought of it that so way. 100 kingpins drop on an island <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, no, that does make him more of a dirtbag. I really never thought Kingpin would be like a main villain in a Spider-Man movie before, even though, I mean, I've seen him in, in a bunch of media, like, you know, you see him in the cartoons, you see him in, in some games, like Sp- the 2018 Spider-Man, and you're like, yeah, he's a, he's a cool character, but I don't know if he's going to be the main villain, like, he's he's cool, like, you beat him up, whatever, you beat up some of his goons, and he goes to jail. Yeah. In this one, no, he's really like going for it and he's assembling all these people and he's making sure he gets what he wants. And they made him such a big force, you know, in this one. Uh, it's just really, uh, really literally, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's really a big force. <laughs> Dude, dude um, it actually is kind of funny that whenever they are doing the science scene, whenever they show him getting out of the car, like they have an actual cut where it's the car, it goes back to Peter B. Parker and Miles, and then it cuts back and he's already outside of the car. And I was like, yeah, you know what? That's probably for the best. I don't exactly know how you want to, how you how want you to, do in that. this universe, getting, yeah. Yeah, getting Kingpin out of the car. The car, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Man's um, double the size of the car, but you know, yeah, how does it get out of there? <laughs> I think at this point we should jump into Spider-Man. What is it? Peter B. Parker, right? I think. Yes. We yeah. should well, actually no. To, to be fair, I want to talk about Peter A. Parker because. Oh yeah, sure, honestly, sure. I feel like this movie cheats it so quickly into liking him, and I think it's because of that Raimi recap that they have at the beginning, where it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, this is all the stuff that I did. I am so impressed with it because I feel like you could easily just be like, 
yeah, this is the same Spider-Man. There's on, I guess, you know, maybe Doc Ock didn't die. This is maybe a different universe kind mm-hmm. of thing. But the fact that you have that entire thing of like, yeah, this is who Spider-Man is. And then it cuts immediately back to him. It feels like, okay, obviously Spider-Man is Spider-Man. So you obviously already have a connection to him. But the fact that they referenced the Raimi trilogy so hard at the beginning, it just already makes you feel like, you know what? Yeah, this is the exact same Spider-Man. And I love that he is the perfect idolized Spider-Man. Like, I feel like if you wanted to try to put a parallel to him of what another superhero is like, how people love Kevin Conroy in the animated series and the Batman games, Peter A. Parker is supposed to be that. He is supposed to be basically everything that people love in Spider-Man rolled all into one where he is the best aspects of that, where he's not exactly full on, you know, middle age like Peter B. Mm -hmm. Parker. He's not completely tween or middle schooler, high schooler Mm -hmm. uh, Spider-Man. He is already a couple years into his career and basically at his peak, kind of like the Spider-Man PS4 game. Like he is that right age where he's been doing this for a while he's experienced and he knows what he's doing you know there was a rumor i believe before spider-verse came out or not before spider-verse after spider-verse came out where it's (laughs) like i think toby was supposed to be in spider-verse at one point but something happened i don't know if that rumor was true but i did read (laughs) somewhere where toby was supposed to be voicing it's either he he was gonna make a cameo or he was actually supposed to be voicing the the uh the first Peter Parker, um, and I man and I feel like if that I, I mean the movie's already great I don't really think there's much you could do to make it even yeah. better, <laughs> but man it, you know it's just something that makes you wonder like damn if Toby opened right w- with him opening the the little monologue and then him dying that would be just so oh. incredible that would have been like even even more incredible than it already was but yeah peter P- <laughs> peter a parker is just yeah i mean he's just this he's your friendly neighborhood spider-man he's like the he's the he spider-man the. you know and love yeah yeah he's like the this is the only spider-man he starts out by saying like he's the only spider-man in this universe or something whatever he said um dude uh the line that gets me whenever i watch it is whenever peter realizes that his spider senses are going off at the same time as miles and he so much genuinely with almost excitement in his voice goes i thought i was the only one like there's mm. something with the way that uh, chris pine yeah i think this is right chris mm-hmm. the way that chris pine says that line there's just something where he's like you know how peter b parker is like terrified of having kids i feel like peter a parker would love having kids and being able to see that miles could be someone that he can teach and then immediately after he's like oh my god i have someone there's someone else here like there's something that is so infectious about just the way that he reads those lines that it makes me so happy that Peter A. Parker exists for as little as he does, but it makes you so happy that this is the idealized Spider-Man that you have in your mind. This is the Spider-Man who would be excited to see Miles. He would be excited to be able to pass on his knowledge onto another Spider-Man because he just generally wants to do good. And if he can have someone help him do that, he's going to open the chance with like with open arms. Yeah, and I think on the same note, it is also kind of sad the way you put it because it's like, I thought I was the only one. And, it, you know, then the, now that you think about it, you know, being being the only Spider-Man, the Spider-Man must be really exhausting and really lonely because yeah. you're like the only one doing all of this shit, saving everybody. So, yeah, it must have been really exciting for him to see somebody else like him that he, he could relate to, you know, because he probably mm-hmm. can't relate to probably anyone you know and you know seeing miles and seeing he could do the spider senses with him and it probably made him you know a little bit happy and then he he died like five minutes after. Just... you know it's Which... a little it's a little tragedy you know dude kingpin here's the thing i remember thinking that with that smack like even in theaters that I just heard ah, boom right and i hear the sound and i'm like oh damn peter just got knocked the fuck out <laughs> and then you have Kingpin saying, get rid of the body. I was like, oh, what? Did, yeah. Did, did, you just kill, did you just kill Spider-Man? Yeah. It's like, oh, it's so rough. That yeah. I couldn't actually believe that. One thing I do want to make mention while we're talking about this scene, 
I noticed this time that Peter A. Parker, whenever he's swinging around like that machine uh, in like the basement, I realized that Miles actually does some of the same moves that Peter A. Parker does at the end of the movie. And it's just stuff like that where unless you watch it a couple of times, honestly, well, okay, maybe people picked it up on the first time and they're smarter than me. Fuck you guys. Okay, I'm jealous. Um, <laughs> there are people who could watch this over and over again and start noticing that the moves that Peter does whenever he's swinging around like the dimension machine, Miles does the exact same moves at the end. And it's just something that's so satisfying to be able to see that Miles is getting his ass kicked so much in this movie. But by the time that he gets to the end, he is basically doing the same moves that Peter A. Parker does. And God, that's just, it makes me so happy to see that this kid who just cannot catch a break. I mean, you have that entire scene that we haven't talked about where he's in school and it's basically an entire metaphor for puberty. And this yeah. kid cannot catch a break, but then he finally at the end gets to be the Spider-Man that Peter A. Parker always knew he could be. Yeah, I actually didn't catch that either. I mean, I doubt, there's a lot of things in this movie where you have to watch it twice or three times or four times to catch. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're just so enthralled with the moment to moment thing, like frame that you're not really thinking and looking for anything really that references anything, you know, um, because <laughs> everything is just so engaging at the time. So, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't think that you're dumb for missing up on like on, on stuff like that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, but here's the thing. Uh, whenever it comes to passive pixels, there is an air of me willing to make fun of everything, but mostly myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand what you mean. Um, so we talked about Peter A. Let's go to B. Take it. Peter B is where I was like, there's a lot of things where you're like, just what the fuck? Like, what is it? What is this movie? Where is this going? Like, you just that's part of the fucking genius of this movie, because when you look at Peter B. Parker, you're like, first of all, you're like, holy shit, that's me. <laughs> like, you're, you're like, <laughs> you're like, I cry in this hour too. Like, holy shit, that is who? That's me. Wow, how did they get this on film? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to go back because there is a line where Mary Jane is giving a speech at uh, the funeral, and she goes, "We're all Spider Man." I love that your interpretation of "We are all Spider Man" is, bro. I can't pay rent either. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! I'm clinically depressed too. Whoa! Let's get it! I eat pizza. I'm getting divorced too. Woo. I'm get. I'm getting. I can't fit in my too. pants anymore. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, holy shit, that's me. But besides, after you get over that, you're like, holy shit, and then you're like, what the fuck? This is Peter Parker. This is this is Spider Man, and you're like, holy shit, I gotta. Again, they hook you in with each character. Like you just you're instantly hooked because you're like, now I gotta see how how the fuck is this person going to change the story? How is he included in this story? And how is he gonna help? And how is his story gonna end up? Him being mm -hmm. bugging depressed and 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 fat <laughs> and you know, just just this pessimist <laughs> asshole. Again, I mean, there's a character for everybody in this movie, right? So, yeah, it's funny where it's like, holy shit, that's me. But it's like, yeah, like, that, like this is relatable in a, in, a, in a funny way where it's like, I probably don't wouldn't want to give a shit anymore if I was Spider-Man too. Like, if nobody was taking me seriously, I lost the love of my life. Uh, you know, why the fuck would I care either? It's like, it's just something, it just, he hooks you in right away. Dude, Peter B. Parker is exactly the person I was walking into this movie. <laughs> I was just watching this movie, just ready to hate it. And then Peter B. Parker comes. Like, that's the thing. If you are not sold on this movie, Peter B. Parker is the thing that sells you on this movie because he is so sick of everything, just like you are if you're not yeah. sold on this movie by this yeah. point. So you are hooked into this point. And if you are on Peter B. Parker's side, then by the end of the movie, when he actually has a moment where he's like, oh, man, do I want kids? Like, that is a moment that if you are being held on to him the entire time, I don't see how you could not like this movie. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah, yeah, perfectly said. God, by the way, the entire introduction, though, you just really want it. I love that 
he just gets his ass kicked so badly. That's the thing. It's still a kid's movie, so you still have to kind of let the audience know. Well, not the audience. You still got to let mm-hmm. the kids know, I guess. You still got to let the kids know, yeah, you know what? This kid, mm, you know, we don't exactly think that Peter B. Parker is the exact person you want to look up to. So yeah. then they have an extended sequence of beating his ass as he's being swung around by the train. <laughs> yeah, Which, yeah. Oh my god, I love, that's the thing, it went on for maybe just a little too long, because I feel like you kind of got the idea, but the animation and the inventiveness of how badly he's getting his ass kicked (laughs) is just so funny that I just kind of forgive it. Yeah, you have to, I mean, I just love those sequences, and I love, I absolutely love every intro sequence, I don't think I ever had a a problem with one man and um, yes that's a thing on its own the intro sequences for each spider spider man and woman um but yeah uh, oh no, dude peter wait wait, wait. B- peter b parker just going and uh, what is it miles going with great power and peter b parker's like don't you shut your ass right now yeah, don't yeah. don't you finish that line okay i've had to deal with that shit for the last decade of my life don't you bring that up see in a funny way it's like yeah us too like the audience yes. is like yeah <laughs> Don't we don't want to hear that shit anymore? Like, it, like the, dude, the amazing Spider Man couldn't even say that shit. They just went, oh well, you know, this is stuff, 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 and responsibility. And it's like, ah, oh, you tried yeah. so fucking hard to write around your way <laughs> yeah, <laughs> around that. Yeah, exactly. No, it's just I love Peter B. Um, I think it starts. Where does it start out? Was it? Does he... um at the funeral? I'm not not the funeral. The graveyard. The graveyard. Yes, yes. That's is that where he was going to? What was he doing there? So I think he was going there because whenever he got dimension hopped, he heard that he was dead. And he's like, wait, no, no. Why is Peter Parker dead? Mm, yeah. I'm Peter Parker. Went yeah. to the to the tombstone, saw Miles there. He's like, oh, hey, what the hell is this kid doing here? And then oh, Miles yeah. shocks him. And then you have the entire slapstick comedy with the train. Yes, yes, yes. I remember that scene. Um, and he then he he gave Miles like a run for his money, too. Like he was he was, wasn't he like beating his ass at one point or or he was not. Beating no, his no. ass, but he, <laughs> Or was it the opposite? No, no. Miles was beating the shit out of Peter B. Parker oh, because oh, he was oh. still stunned. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because I remember somebody was getting their ass beat in that sequence, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I was like, whoa. All right, uh, this is very one sided. And then the cops show up, right? Yeah, they they chase him down. Which mm-hmm. honestly, that I feel like you just kind of need that. Like, if he's uh, the corpse. Oh, hold on, hold on. Them saying that it's a homeless oh, corpse. Man. That's that yeah. a spy- person dressed like Spider Man is just dragging her around. Uh, that's insane. Yeah, especially next to next to Spider Man's graveyard. It's like, what the fuck are you doing here? Uh, and then they, to be and, fair, in New York, I haven't. I'm assuming that just it's just weird shit like that. So if you heard someone saying, "Hey, someone's dragging a homeless corpse," most people would go, "Oh yeah, okay, that's fine. That's just Tuesday, whatever." Yeah, I guess. So. Well, have you been? You've never been in New York? No, that's the thing. Man, what like, the hell I'm, are you doing, man? Do you realize how little I like going out of the house? <laughs> yeah, man, but that, but bro, but New York is just, uh, man, because I just came back from New York. Um, really. And, yeah, yeah, I came back from New York. It was like my last stop where, where for my job, and it was like uh-huh. it's just this magical. Every time you go to New York, it really is this magical. There's something about New York where mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. People can say what they want, you know, it's dirty. There's rats, this, that, and the third. There's just something mm-hmm. walking through the city where it's like this, this, this magical experience you don't really get in any other state. I think at some point, brother, you need to, you need. Oh, to, I will. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I'm sure you, I'm sure you will. But yeah, at some point, just. Make that like your next destination because it it really is this magical place. Like, it, like I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, it could be dirty, but that's all part of the. It's funny to say, but it's part of the charm. I don't know. Uh, New York is <laughs> Dude, New York. I will say this: my wife has been wanting to go, and honestly, I can't wait because I know all New Yorkers are assholes, and so I get to be my true self in New York. Okay, I get to bump into mm. people. I get to do the most offensive Italian accents that I can. I don't have to open doors for anyone. Mm. I can. Just just be the most selfish asshole that I can be. And you know what? New York seems like it rewards that. So I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. And, and another thing, if you're going to New York, you should probably actually do the New York experience where you don't run out of car because you really, if you're in the city. Oh, fuck that. I'm not doing that. No, no. Yeah, exactly. Get a place in the city, uh, like an Airbnb or whatever hotel you choose and just use the subways because A, they're super, super cheap. Like they're really super cheap. And be mm-hmm. like, just, you'll just get that experience of like riding on the subway and Google Maps has it, it shows you exactly what train you need to be on and how long it takes. So it's nothing like where it's like very scary or anything. So you'll be fine. 
but yeah, New York is just a great place. You should probably go. That's a side tangent, but yeah, New York, New York <laughs> is great. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't think all, you, you know, no, no, watch it, watch it. I'll, I'll bring it back into topic. All right, I can't wait for me to see dead ass B Spider Man try and hand me a malt liquor. Like I can't <laughs> wait for that. <laughs> I want him to be wearing Tim's. I want him to wear New York's uh, Yankees hat. Like this is exactly what I want. Why did yeah, you not put so, dead ass B Spider Man in Spider Verse? I was just I was just about to say every other universe gets this very cool ass <laughs> Spider Man. We just get we get this Spider Man with no powers. That's a New Yorker and being an asshole wearing Tim's. Like that's that's the one we get in this universe. This like very Dead talentless ass Spider-Man. This talentless, and he does not stop listening to Jay Z. <laughs> Jay Z, that's all he did. There's no web swinging, no nothing, and he doesn't save anybody. We just get this <laughs> dead ass be Spider-Man. <laughs> dead uh, ass be Spider-Man, save me! Hey yo, you hey, heard four forty four. Story of J- OJ. Hey, yo, fuck that B. I ain't climbing up those stairs. <laughs> I'm Spider-Man. I just climbed through the outside, you fucking mook. Hey, I gotta take the subway. I'll, I'll be there in a sec. I gotta take the subway. <laughs> hey, hold my bagel. <laughs> yeah, you like out of a bagel shop? Oh, man. That's the one we get. That's all reality, unfortunately. Someone buys a bagel, dead-ass B Spider-Man's in the back, and he just whips the bagel and just pulls it. He's like, hey, you need to pay for that. He's like, fuck you, I'm Spider-Man. Fuck you. And it's not even like a real web. It's like some sock or something, like one of those big-ass socks that he just tries to, he like, put some glue on it or some shit. Oh, man. <laughs> dead ass B Spider Man for Spider Verse Two, please. Yo, I can guarantee you they'll they'll have some sort of variation in that if if the writer is the same writers are involved, they'll do something. Dude, I I will fucking lose my mind and just start yelling in the theater like a yeah. feral ape yeah. if I yeah. see dead ass B Spider Man. <laughs> Oh, yeah, speaking of, we forgot, we forgot they did the meme too. I remember, remember at the end uh, of Spy, I was cutting all the way to the end, but you remember when they did the meme, like where everybody's like pointing at each other? Oh my oh, god, my god. Just... that shit was so <sighs> funny. Because they didn't just do the meme; they like added some extra shit to it. Like they like they just they added some dialogue, I think, and it was like I just remember cracking up um, at that part, dude. I remember watching that and I was like, wait a minute, you guys are doing yet another meme? Because, like, here's the thing there's like four of them. There's the fucked up ice cream one, which, come on, that was a meme for a little bit. You have Spider Man behind uh, Dr. Ock's desk and he's sitting at his arms at the side and it's like, oh, it's a Spider Man desk meme. And then you have during the credits where, oh man. I can't remember which meme it is, but there's one during the credits. And then at the end of the credits, oh, no, sorry. They actually do the desk meme again, except that was a hundred of them. And then you have the ending where it's the pointing one, which honestly, I am so impressed by the fact that this movie can dip into meme humor because like, that's the thing. You've seen some shit where they do meme humor and in like a week after it releases, it's already old. So I am actually impressed that the writers were smart enough to be able to pick memes that even by the time the movie came out were already kind of old. So even watching it later, it's like, oh, yeah, that's an old meme. But like it was already old back then. Like it's just a smart move. Yeah, it was very poignant because even that that meme is still that's like a the point, especially the pointing meme. That's just a meme that's never going to die, to be honest. You, you see that everywhere. Mm. And yeah, it's, it's good that the writers knew like their intuition. I feel like some of that stuff, I don't know if that stuff is like pre-scripted, like back wherever they were doing pre-production or if that's added in later. I assume they probably added it in like a little bit like last minute, but. I really don't know how movies making movies work. Like I, I know I'm <laughs> music videos, work, but yeah, but I don't know how, how theatrical releases and stuff works out. Um, so yeah, they could have added it last minute or, but I just remember none. See some, some, some movies trying to make memes, but by the time they add them, they're like super, super outdated and they're cringy. And it's yeah. like, what the fuck is this shit? Like get this shit off my screen. And then that's the thing. <laughs> nope animation is really difficult where you cannot fuck up when it comes to making them because Mm -hmm. if you do and you're throwing away a whole bunch of work like you are literally spending money and then just dumping the work because a lot of times you can't really reuse things like if you're watching a movie and you kind of have some shots that you didn't really use you might be able to use it in the cutting room floor later on but like in an animated movie it's really hard to repurpose scenes so 
I'm almost that's the thing. I'm giving them a lot of credit because, well, I mean, they made fucking Spider-Verse, but I think that maybe this may have already been written in because like mm. animation just kind of works like that. Like you cannot fuck up on this or else you'll be wasting a lot of money if you're like, oh, wait, wait, wait. But now add this It's like, well, shit, now we need to mess with the timing to make sure that we have enough space here. We need to make sure that the score goes a little bit longer to accommodate the extra couple of frames that are going here. Like I oh, wow, feel yeah. like I didn't think about any of that. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's the thing. Editing kind of breaks your brain where you just start realizing, oh, why don't you do that here and it's like oh well because the music is only three minutes long so if i do that Adjust the music this else. is the cue mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no 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 for sure i forgot about that so yeah i mean i guess it's just good writing i guess it just speaks volume of, of how funny like just relevant that movie is they just knew what they were doing i mean the writers credit mm -hmm. to the writers man peter b parker honestly i love his arc in this movie because he is just so cynical at the beginning and what I love is that it never feels like there's just this big moment where he's like, ah, you know what? I'm finally going to be the person that my universe, Mary Jane, wanted to be. He is just the entire movie being so sarcastic and not really taking it seriously. But every single time that he interacts with Miles, he starts learning that there's more reasons about why he became Spider-Man in the first place. Like, it almost feels like Peter B. Parker at this point when he gets into Spider-Verse. Ooh. Oh god damn that was oh fuck it tastes like wings. <laughs> you good? <laughs> oh yeah, no no, I just had to burp a little bit. Oh, <laughs> so man. Spicy, um, spicy oh, no no no. <laughs> I will say this though. Every time that I get Tuesday wings, I think of you. So fuck you for that, okay? <laughs> let's go. You got Tuesday wings? <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Oh dude, oh, I asked my wife, she's like, it. I don't know what to get. Oh dude, I hate that you put in that thing about buy one, get one, because now I'm ruined. Every time I look at Tuesdays, I'm like, Do I want wings? Bro, that's exactly what I do. But that's free me for Thursdays because I think boneless, boneless is superior. You heard it here, seven people that listen. Boneless wings are superior to all seven of you that agree with him. Leave if you agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love both, bro. You, bro. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I was gonna get into it, but it's like whatever. It's just another comment. The wing tangent, okay? Fine, but garlic parmesan. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Oh, is that what you get? You get garlic, yes. parmesan? Okay. Yeah. I, you know you can pick up the four sauces, right? Yeah, I know, but that's the thing. I like my garlic parmesan. I just like okay. the way it tastes with ranch on it. I just recommend you kind of just switch up something, because you could do all these sauces. Just just try. Just try some other sauces. I recommend the Caribbean jerk, salt, and vinegar. That's the one that I get. But All right. Anyway. You know what? Uh, I'll try yeah. it. I like different things. We'll try. Mm, okay. Oh, <laughs> Peter B. Parker. <laughs> he ha he likes pizza, not wings. You see, we bring pizza it back around every single time. There's a bur there's a burger scene. That's that's where it comes the, to, I think. The meme of him holding the gun in his own mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, they were in the burger shop, I think, right after that whole scene went down with with him and Miles, right? Correct. Yeah, they go to the diner shop after Miles convinces him to be able to teach him and mentor him all that. Okay, yes, yes. And then right after that, they go to, I believe, Doc Ox thing. Yeah, they go to the science lab, and honestly, that reveal of Doc Ock is actually something that threw me off of the science. That's like, another oh. thing, yeah, man. Just so many of those in, in in this movie. It's another thing. Like, what? It's a woman, huh? Like, that's a, you're like, what? I'm just women I'm can't a, be evil. What? I, I'm a gamer. I'm a I'm a I'm a Spider Man comic book nerd. This can't ha be happening right now. Like, yeah, exactly. I'm gonna go outside and start protesting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They feminized the spider villains. I don't know. Uh, that's a, so yes, that entire scene was really good because. I'm actually impressed at how menacing they made her. Like, almost immediately, she goes from what you think is, like, the bohemian aunt that, like, no one ever really likes to invite, because if not, she's gonna have your room smelling like incense. But, like, she immediately flips on a dime and turns into Doc Ock, and you're like, by the way, Doc Ock's arms work so well in animation because they get to go even faster and insane when it comes mm -hmm. to trying to attack the Spider-Man. And, and I love how they what? did her arms specifically with the bubble things, I believe. Oh, did yeah, she... you're right. Like, she yeah. looks like it doesn't look like metal. It looks like it's even more flexible. Yeah, yeah. W weren't they like some, let me see, let me see. Doc, gel oh, or something like that? Yeah, yeah. It just They just look really, really cool and it, and it serves animation really, really well. They got to play with that a lot. Yeah, so Peter B. Parker, my god, 
just this entire man, just how he just slowly throughout the movie starts liking Miles. One of the things that always reminds me is that Peter B. Parker is basically done developing as a character is whenever they tie up Miles into his desk chair because he is finally starting to push Miles. He's like, look, either you're going to be Spider-Man or we're going to have to do this without you. And it's kind of heartbreaking because you're rooting for Miles this entire time and he just Mm -hmm. cannot stop receiving shit this entire movie. But the moment where he's like, I'm the person that's going to stay behind and be the person that lets all the other Spider-Man leave. There's something about that that feels like there is a good level of maturity that Peter B. Parker had forgotten at this point of his life where he feels like he needs to be the person that does this. He needs to redeem the fact that he's wasted so much time of not really caring who he was as Spider-Man that now this is at least going to be something that makes up for all of that. And what I love is that that feels kind of like a sad ending to him where it would be like, oh, you know what? He got what he wanted, but also, you know, he still got MJ in the other universe. What I love is that the movie gives him a good end point where you could go, yeah, his arc is over. And then you still have Miles coming in and telling him, no, you are the person that is ready to go back and win MJ again. And I love his arc because he gets to be the Spider-Man that he used to be. And Miles gets to be the Spider-Man that he wants to strive to be. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, (laughs) Spider-Man. You see in the middle of his story where it's like, what was it? The scene where Kingpin's throwing a party, I believe, (laughs) or something. And then MJ is there. And you see just Peter B. Parker just completely freeze up and, you know, seeing MJ in Miles' universe. And she, Mm -hmm. it's this thing where it just made me think of like, hey, you know, you're seeing someone you love, but they don't know who you are. But mm-hmm. but you know you have a mission to do right now, so you can't really do this. And it's it's kind of heartbreaking to see, like, because it's very relatable. It's like, you know, especially if you've been through a breakup or something, you could yeah. sometimes, you know, you wish, hey, damn, like, I wish I wish I could meet this person again for the first time and maybe, you know, do things a little differently. And it, it's like Peter B. Parker saw that and uh, he couldn't help himself. But he just couldn't do anything about it either. Like, he had a mission to do, so he couldn't. And it's just this heartbreaking thing of, like, hey, she's right there. Like, you guys are on good terms. She doesn't really know who you are right now. Like, he had to let it go because he had some mission to do, you know. Um, He does the verbal equivalent of typing out an entire paragraph and then just deleting it. Yeah. No, no, what that's a that's a perfect way of saying it because and it's just really sad, you know. It's, I don't know, it's just this th- at least at least for me when I saw it, it's like it was supposed to be a little oh, yeah. comedic, but it's just a sad thing, you know. It's like you can't really do anything about it. She's right there. It's just yeah, that's just one of the I mean that's the arcs I Spider-Verse right there. The bread joke is for the kids. The adults are like God, he's really trying to just release all of his pain that he's had from this on <laughs> yes. someone who only looks a little bit like her. It, yeah. It's like getting drunk and then seeing a blonde. You're like, that's my ex right there. Hey, listen, I'm sorry for sleeping with your cousin. I'm so uh, sorry. And she's like, who are you? And it's like, oh, no. Yeah. Maybe not to that degree, but it's yeah, definitely yeah. something where he's unloading everything that he needs on someone who looks similar. Yeah exactly exactly it's a little bit hard kind of feel sad for that for peter b pb's character a little bit and yeah at the end you know he does feel like he accomplished something with miles and yeah i think they tied up his arc perfectly we haven't really talked about her at all but honestly i think at this point if we start going the line for characters i don't know if there's much else we can say uh yeah. when stacy yeah. okay yeah i just enjoyed her energy i enjoyed her bubbliness i actually really enjoyed her story which is that peter parker dies in her universe and because of that she doesn't really make friends which is why i like that's the thing we it's kind of descending at this point about how much screen time the rest of the spider-man get but like gwen's arc of her kind of not wanting to be close to people but then she also ends up getting this small familial bond with the rest of the Spider-Man. Like, that's the thing. That line that I mentioned earlier with Peter A. Parker about you're just like me, that's something that all the Spider-Men keep repeating, and it's something that I kind of love about this movie, that it's one of those things where it feels like, you know how it is. Whenever people are looking at 
characters on a screen you just tend to relate to them hard there's something about a character saying to another you're just like me that almost feels fourth wall breaking where it feels like that's what audiences like about spider-man being able to see themselves on the screen and gwen being able to say that to them then you relate it to the fact that she's the one who tells miles about uncle aaron's death and she's like listen the people in this room are probably the ones who can relate to you the most like there's something about gwen stacy's character that i don't think she gets enough credit but what she does helps the movie so much that i still would think that you could not cut her from this movie at all yeah i have to agree and the fact that peter dies in her universe as well and and she's like very standoffish at first and trying to like you know not be attached keep to, her distance yeah keep her distance that's very true and i think by the end of it her being closer to miles her being closer to these people that you know are kind of like family because they understand what she's been through more than anybody else does in her universe right and these are from different mm -hmm. universes it makes it more impactful because it's very satisfying to see how it ends because you see her getting close to miles you see her getting close to peter b and and the rest of the cast yeah i loved her arc as well i don't think the movie would be as good without her and that's why i'm happy that she's at least going to be the sequel hook so i'm very yeah. glad that at least it seems like the next time she may be willing to be more open and we'll probably get more of her yeah i just can't wait i want to see how that how that it turns out i don't i mean i just don't know what to expect from from a spider verse 2 to be honest it's just um i'm terrified <laughs> You are, right? Yeah, because you're like, this movie was so good. There's, I mean, whatever. It's like, you know, I like to make this compare. It's like Breath of the Wild and Breath of the Wild 2. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm excited for Breath of the Wild 2. Very excited. But on that same note, I know that it probably won't be as crazy as, or it won't give me the same feelings as I did playing the first game. So I'm expecting Spider-Man, you know, the second, the sequel, not to give me the same I mean, it's going to be great, I think, if the people are the same people are involved, but it's just really hard to top this one, man, especially with all the character building they did and everyone's arc. I just, I want to see, unless there's new characters involved, I got to see how this, you know, goes. You see, this movie gets to cheat so badly because mm -hmm. once again, it gets to have its cake and eat it too. It gets to be a Spider-Man origin story while also giving you so many Spider-Men that already know what it's like to be Spider-Man for so long that you get the best of what usually is the best part of the first movie while also getting all the benefits of the sequel where you have everything already established. So that's the thing. It feels like this movie is so efficient with every single minute of screen time that it almost feels like, how can you improve on this? How can you make another sequel that is going to give me the same highs that this original movie did? And the, the next thing that I'm probably going to bring up is going to be like a testament to that, which is the leap of faith. Like, how can if you try to do another leap of faith moment, that already is setting yourself up for failure because that is the apex of emotion in this entire movie where Miles finally gets to be Spider-Man. I don't know what you can do that would hit that emotional resonance again without feeling like, oh, well, you just did the leap of faith again. Yeah, I mean, I think for the sequel, they'd have to either... That's why I'm saying it has to be new characters that are as good or even better than the first, and they're going to have their own thing. Because remember, it's not called Miles you know, Spider-Verse Spider -verse Miles Morales. It's not called that. Hmm. For all we know, you know, and I'm not saying this might happen. For all we know, Sm Miles might die and someone else might take his place. Of course, I don't think they do that. But I'm saying, like, Miles might not even be the main character in this one. You know what I mean? Hmm. So, yeah, it's totally possible they could hit some sort of highs and lows. And I trust that they know how to do it in a tasteful way. You know, I don't think yeah. the the right, if they're, especially if they're involved again, that you know, they would let it be this, oh, okay, I saw this coming, whatever. Spider-Verse, if I have it here, uh, Phil Lord wrote the screenplay with one of the directors. He's also got a story credit, and then Phil Lord and Chris Miller, they both have producing credits. And then Spider-Verse 2, Phil Lord and Chris Miller are both writing the screenplay, and they're both producing. So, Oh, man. Uh, 
That's... Yeah, that's the thing. They're both hands on for the screenplay. Mm-hmm. And hold on, is that? I think the di- wait. Hold. Oh shit. What? Oh hell yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me see. If... <laughs> Fuck yeah. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I'm looking at the credits and I'm getting mm-hmm. myself excited. So Spider Verse Two is having. Bill Lord and Chris Miller write along with one of the directors who also that's the thing. So, ugh, fuck, I'm restarting. <laughs> Spider Verse One had Bill Lord and one of the directors write it, and then the sequel is adding Chris Miller into the mix as one of the writers. So they're mm. basically just adding another writer in. Mm. But Perfect. what I realize is that one of the directors of Spider Verse Two is Joaquin Dos Santos. And now the only reason I know this man is because he directed some of the coolest fucking episodes in Avatar The Last Airbender, including oh. some of the, the, the final series, the series finale. And those episodes are incredible. So now that I know that, oh, by the way, just because I feel like I want to mention this as well, David Filoni, the person who is basically in charge of Star Wars entirely, one of his first jobs working at Avatar Last Airbender. So Mm -hmm. that place is like a talent bubble that just all spread out across (laughs) across film and all that. So I have even more faith in the sequel than I had even previously. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's just I have no doubt it'll be no less than great. But yeah, we're going to see where the story goes because it is a Spider-Verse movie. It might not even be like a mild story. And, you know, with all the talent there, they're going to make it entertaining for sure. So now I want to do this because I just want to give it so much focus. Everything leading up to the Leap of Faith to the Leap of Faith. The entire movie leading up to this point, Miles' dad has just kind of been this guy that he's the dad you always know the one who just kind of is ready to embarrass you and kind of oblivious to his feelings but then you have this moment that just hits so hard immediately after you see him finding uncle aaron's body you already have one moment that you're like oh okay you know what even though he's been kind of a caricature up until this point that's the thing you have three beats you have the voicemail where he calls uncle aaron just like listen i don't know where my son is i need you to help me to the next scene which is him finding his brother's dead body and then you have this final scene where he is finally allowing himself to be vulnerable to miles he is finally being able to speak to his son just not as someone who he feels like is too much of a kid like he wants to look him in the eye as much as he can through that door to tell him, hey, look, I know that you liked Uncle Aaron. He was my brother, and even if we had disagreements, he is still family, and I need to give you this bad news. And he has to overcompensate for the fact that he cannot hold his son to tell him this devastating news, that he just tells him so many things. And honestly, the two lines that always get me are, this spark in you it's amazing and the way that he says it has just so much love in it that you truly believe that he cares about miles even throughout all the shit that he kind of gives him and his obliviousness he very deep down still cares about his son and when he's like i love you son and then he goes you don't have to say it back though and he says it with just such a defeated tone i love this scene because it's something that lets itself stay heavy for a lot longer than most kids movies would probably allow themselves to yeah in that scene in particular you know the, i think there's a lot of focus on miles but i think the shining star of that whole scene is the is the father it's like where this yeah. where it's like okay yeah you're looking for miles reaction is he gonna say something back how is he gonna react to this news um, i don't think he- miles can he has this the web on his mouth <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like how you want to see how this whole scene pans out. And the father, I mean, you just you kind of feel sorry, like so bad for for the dad because he just lost his he already is going through it with his son and Mm -hmm. he just lost his brother. And now he's trying to come back to his son. He went to his brother for when Miles, you know, disappeared. And now he's going to Miles for when his uncle Aaron from when his brother uh died and it's just this this very powerful scene where you just can't help but feel really bad for um 
Miles has died. One of my favorite things going back to the audio is that the moment that Miles starts believing in himself is the fact that you hear the strings from the Raimi movies. Like you hear this rising and falling to make you think of Spider-Man. And it's one of those things that is done only through the audio. And I fucking love it because you have the strings cutting in to let you know he's about to become spider-man and then what happens immediately the music for the leap of faith starts jumping in and that is exactly what miles is miles is the strings of spider-man and then with the hip-hop beat that's underneath it that Mm -hmm. makes him who he is like Mm -hmm. that is the kind of shit i love when you are telling us everything that needs to be said with these characters just through the music man i remember just i mean i don't think anybody that's watched that scene hasn't gotten goosebumps i remember seeing that scene the first time and you had goosebumps and it was just this enthralling like thrilling moment in the theater where i was just like what the fuck this just feels so crazy and as soon as i got home i remembered when i got home i went and I think I Googled Leap of Faith or Googled like yes. be- Spider-Verse becoming Spider-Man, Miles becoming Spider-Man or something. Those mm-hmm. stupid shit. And mm-hmm. I just wanted to watch that scene over and over. And yes. e- I think every time, and, I, and then I got a new TV. Um, and <laughs> oh, then I just, yes. And then I got a new TV and I'm like, the first thing I booted up on that on that TV was my that Leap of Faith scene because I just absolutely love that scene. I, I think the way you put it is just, very eloquent actually that goes for the rest of the podcast i mean you you say like <laughs> you, you you say a bunch of shit and then i'm like uh yeah and uh <laughs> i think it was cool when uh his man spider-man dies. did the whip <laughs> he did the little thing with the i like it yeah it's pretty good I, that's just how I, because you say it so well i was like i don't know what else to say because you just you eloquently describe everything um but i'm gonna have to bleep that out because i can't handle compliments <laughs> Oh my god, that's okay. <laughs> no, but it's like, but but no, that that scene is like one of the best scenes, if not the best scene in the movie. And I've watched it countless of times. Sometimes I just boot it up, and like it's just kind of motivational. Yeah. It's very, it's just very strong, and um, it's like what you know when you know what's up, danger starts, and it's like, <sighs> you know, it's like you know it's about to go down again, and it's like. I don't know. It just never gets old. I love that scene so much. And it's just, and it's very beautifully, by the way, it's like one of the most beautiful scenes in the movie as well. Yes. Seeing New York at night and he's on the skyscraper, like he's on the side of the building. It's just so beautiful, especially on a TV. You turn off all the lights. It's just, it, it, you're in that world now. You're in, you're in that universe, you know? Dude, you need to stop saying this shit because if not, by the time we're done re- recording this, I'm just going to put it on again. We That's have the thing. to. Like, that, there's no, there's no downside to it. There's only dopamine <laughs> to the brain. There's no downside. <laughs> but you're not wrong. But the thing is like, okay, so that scene, the leap of faith is something that I use as a demo disc whenever I need to show people what this theater room can do. Like, it's like, it handles mm-hmm. the colors beautifully the sound system is insane like just everything about that scene is so perfect as a demo disc that it, it, not only is it from an emotional standpoint that's the thing we'll get to the emotional standpoint way more but i think that we've neglected the style of this movie so much when we've been talking about it so let's go into it right the style of this movie is so ridiculous where it feels like it handles its art style by making it so kitschy that it can be literally anything it wants at any time and yet all of it fits and i have no idea how the hell you have the talent to be able to make something that is already 3d look 2d give it a comic book feel have a character that straight up looks like just straight up anime and somehow not make it repulsive. You have a guy who is in black and white, and then you have a Looney Tunes ripoff, and all of it just kind of goes, yeah, you know what? Yeah, that looks good. I can't understand what sort of talent they pulled, because this is Sony Pictures animation. No one cares about these guys. These are the Mm -hmm. Hotel Transylvania guys. Where did you somehow, how? How is what I don't understand. Exactly. Especially coming off the, like I said, back then the Emoji movie was like the only thing I think Sony Animation at that time was known for. Because I'm like, who's making the Sony Animation? Oh, shit. Really cool. And then the movie's like dog shit. And then, 
they're making this movie and you're like, oh, okay, I guess. And then it must have just been the, the right people at the right time because there's no – see, there's all this talent. Oh, the sound design, the sound, the sound people, you know, crazy. The artists, mm-hmm. crazy. The writing, crazy. The the the, the, who, the directors, crazy. Voice actors, characters, everything. I, I don't know how you get a team like that and everyone yeah. seems to be in sync, you know, because the art they style all fits. know what the assignment is. Exactly. And the art style fits the writing, fits the directing, fits the visuals on screen, fits the comic book theme, fix, fit, everything fits together. And I remember, I think when I first watched, when, I, when, the, when the movies first started, I'll be honest, uh, I was like, I don't know if I could watch this the whole way through without being annoyed that it's really choppy. You know, because yeah. it had that comic book style and it was like the low frame rate, you know, and it's like, um, is this going to be the whole movie? Because this is really distracting. And then you just kind of get you don't get used to it. You just you kind of embrace it. You're like, this is really yeah. cool, actually. And it just it fits so well. And they play with that, too, when when like everything is going on. But then there is like some animations that are smoother than others through like, mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, like it. it it just plays with so, your actually i'll explain that uh i remember watching a video that apparently showed me that i think most animation is done where it's 12 frames a second where you'll mm-hmm. kind of hold still on some of these drawings for a little bit longer but apparently what they did specifically for the swinging i think during the moment where they're leaving the science building mm-hmm. and specifically the leap of faith those are drawn 24 frames so Mm. there are 24 drawings per second during those swinging scenes to make it look even more smooth and what i think specifically when they had peter b parker swinging with miles i think miles was swinging in 12 frames but peter b parker was swinging in 24 frames and as they're swinging they drew more and more frames on miles to show that he was getting better at it yeah i think i heard that someone that i forgot about that totally um and that's just insane level of detail that these people are, you know, thinking of, you know, it's a, that just shows like every, this is a well-oiled machine and everybody's like working together to do this. this That's just mastery of the medium, honestly, to be like, we need to make this look smoother. Well then draw more. And I heard something where it took like an insane, insane amount of time to make this movie. Like in terms of like each, when it comes to most movies. Oh, oh, does it? Okay. I guess it applies to most movies, but it's like, it's like where it's like, no, 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 no. I'm saying that this movie took longer than most movies would. Like I think most movies get made in like about maybe two years maybe 18 yeah. months and i heard like one minute of and this, this movie. movie was like three or yeah so. it was like 30 seconds of this movie took like i don't know a day or two or so i don't know how the math added up but it was just this crazy number where it's like it was insane like the the amount of hours per frame or whatever the hell you could you calculate that you know <laughs> it's not no it's not a shrek movie that's for sure Even, uh, not to despair shrek dreamworks it's like, yeah it's not a dreamworks, dreamworks movie it's not a dreamworks <laughs> movie it's like it's like some totally different shit okay hold on let me see i'm curious now apparently they were having plans for this back in 2014 2015 and let me see if there's a i think 2015 is probably when they started production so this movie probably took three years which is like one more year than most movies take oh okay okay there was this article yeah yeah go the ahead. leap of faith is just so insane to me because there is so much stuff in there that i caught this time because like i started trying to watch it even deeper I noticed that the leap of faith was echoing even more stuff from before in the movie. Like the fact that the music kicks in right as he's walking up the stairs, there's a scene early on the movie where he's walking upstairs and he's about to do the regular Spider-Man thing where it's like, Oh, let me walk off the building. Let me climb over there. Blah, blah, blah. I realized that it's the exact same music, except it doesn't have the hip hop in the the beginning of the movie. It's only whenever he believes himself at the end that it has the hip hop beat to it. And when I realized that, I was like, fuck, that's cool. It's one of those things that whenever you can tie a character to the motif of their music, that it pushes that at that extra level. And the other thing is, is that you also have the other trials that he tried doing himself at the beginning of the movie. He can finally do them in the leap of faith. 
it's so cool just home how many things they echo of like this is spider-man and this is everything else that the other spider-man have done and he is now accomplished enough to being able to do it and the leap of faith is one of those things that i really don't know if i can pick a more favorite scene in a superhero movie than that man you put it into like the perfect words like i said before i just I, I really don't know what more to say about the leap of faith than I just I ha- that was that's all I can sum it up. When I was done watching the movie, that stuck out to me out of the whole per because that movie's insane. It has so many good scenes, has so many that scene was just like, Okay, yeah, I'm going home. Okay, Spider Man leaping off building scene. That's literally the, what I typed in like on YouTube, some stupid shit. And then <laughs> I got it and I just watched it over and over. And then I put it on the big screen and then I chromecasted it to this. And then I made I turned <laughs> off all the lights to watch it again with the light. It that's just how good that scene is. That's literally all my fish brain can comprehend to you to the end <laughs> user like how much i like this scene <laughs> all right i think that's probably the peak of this episode i think at this point it's just really wrap up at this point what do you think it is wrap up yeah yeah you're right i just want to touch on before we leave the last it. three uh spider man or whatever <laughs> what was it spider what is what was the spider pig was spider pig uh or porky porky P- peter porker yeah peter porker and then i think it's spider pig okay so it is it's peter porker spider pig the uh, the spider noir and then the anime uh, spider, penny parker penny parker man i wish they had a little more screen time but that's all that's the only critique because i love them so much you know nicholas cage um i just love them all so much that I think one of the funniest scenes in that movie is Nicholas Cage. Like, I don't know what it is. It was, there was one scene. There was one scene where he said something or said this big dialogue. It might have been his introduction where it just cracked me the fuck up. It was one of the funniest scenes in the whole movie because he is such a different tone than everybody yeah. else in the movie that it just made me bust out laughing. Like, he said some weird shit while everybody else was talking like normal. Dude, I think you might be talking about the different intros, because I think the thing that cracked me up with him is he's like, sometimes I like to burn matches just so I can feel anything, anything. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. like, it's so fucking emo, and it's one of the funniest shits that he says. And it's this so man funny. just, Nicolas Cage spits out these lines with, like, no effort. Like, the fact that he's so fixated on a Rubik's Cube, like, even when he's leaving, he's like, all right, I'm going back home. I'm taking this with me. I don't <laughs> quite understand it, but one day I will. <laughs> you know, for, for as much serious tone in, in his voice, like he has such a serious tone, it's, there's also this monotone, like, I don't know what it is, but there was this monotone fucking thing that he did where it just cracked me up. Like, I don't know. He was just kind of like rambling to himself, and it was just so <laughs> funny. While he was beating up bad guys, he was just like kind of rambling to himself. And it was just so <laughs> oh, we're going to rock and suck him, huh? Hey, you want to fight? You want to take us tumble, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's just saying some shit. I'm like, what the fuck? This is just hilarious. Um, <laughs> man, and, and Peter Porker, same thing. Man, I, I just wish Ew. these people had more. more. Uh, oh, was it Spider Pig you said? Yeah, Spider Pig. So there's one thing I want to mention. Because you're saying that there was more of him. There's one scene that they cut out because they realized it was taking the air out of the room. So you remember the scene where they're in the bedroom and all the Spider-Men are there and they're all talking about how they lost their uncle. So uh, P- Spider-Pig says something like, yeah, my uncle died too. He tasted delicious or something like that, right? <laughs> and apparently apparently that joke was so funny that they're like, we can't have this joke. This joke is too fucking funny that it breaks the tension. And <laughs> it's one of those things that it's like, My fuck, th- that joke is so good. But it is also like, you can't have that joke there. It that is, is yeah. way too close to the leap of faith yeah. that like you need to keep it serious the entire time. <laughs> but that joke is like, oh man, it's so sad that that joke yeah. had to get cut to keep the tone because damn, if only you could figure out a way to fit that in somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, uh, Spider Pig just also hilarious. I think when he pulls out a mallet or something, I also was <laughs> bursting out laughing. There was something he did like, too where it's like, it was just so out of the Dude, ordinary. His line where he hands him the hammer, he's like, here's a mallet. It'll fit in your pocket. And he just dips. 
<laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. So long, folks. Can he say that, you know, legally? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I remember that one too. I was like, yeah, what <laughs> that was that was kind of weird. And I think people were like, can he say that legally? Like and they, like people actually <laughs> thought that too. Um so I I'm, wish we got I'm more of Penny the Parker. Name that you Oh yeah, actually you're right. You are actually really right. Wait, no, hold on. Yeah. Okay, damn it. I need to say it now. I need to invoke something that I know you love. In Uncharted, what they would do is that they would have Nolan North play Uncharted, and they would have them tell, say, like, hey, can you narrate out loud as you're playing? And they would actually re listen to his voice lines, and they would then reincorporate that into the game as Nathan Drake is in the game. So, like, really? if the train's falling after him, Nolan North would actually be going like, no, 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 when they had him play it. So then they reincorporated that into the game. Oh, wow. Okay, that is, that's kind of genius. I never, I never knew that. And I'm the biggest Uncharted <laughs> fan. That's actually crazy. So it, I have it, to it, imagine that that line where it's like, can you say that legally? Like, I have to imagine that because... Oh man, I think Someone his name is Jake it. Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I think Jake Johnson is a comedian. Like he's a comedic yeah. actor. He's Peter B. Parker. I have to imagine that maybe that had to have been a line where it's mm -hmm. like he said that, and people were like, "Fuck, that's actually really good." Can we include yeah. that? Like, I wouldn't be shocked yeah. if the line uh, for Spider Pig saying "That's all, folks" was the joke enough already because he's a pig. So like that was kind of enough for the audience. But him right. saying it was probably something that they're like oh shit that's pretty good because like you don't have to animate that at all he says it off stream yeah and then again like breaking the fourth wall it's just it's just great i just wish i wish we had more of of like i said penny parker um because i feel like her she's just also so different than the rest that her anime style they could have done more i feel like they could have done more with no. that I feel like they could have done much more with that. And I feel like they could have made some jokes about Weebery or whatever you want to do. <laughs> okay, they never mind. I'm done. in. Okay. Yeah, no. Like I was saying, yeah, she was just underutilized, I think. And she didn't she speak Japanese in the film? No. Or did she not speak at all? No, no, no. She did have a couple of lines, but I liked her because she was, she was still far enough anime that it was still palpable. I really didn't need a 12 year old like, no, I am actually 5,000 years old. Like, I, anything that puts this close to anime starts really freaking me out. Yeah. <laughs> so, this character being so far off of like the bubblegum Japanese mm -hmm. style, I was like, oh, okay, this is okay. It's not going to be like, it's not fucking anime where she's gonna have like a flashback of like her traumatic past five times before yeah. the end the final right, battle. right 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 <laughs> so i actually really liked her because there's something about the fact that her spider-man is this little robot that uh, it's so funny because i didn't realize i cared about this character until she has that scene where she's taking the spider out of the machine and the machine is like giving little hearts as it dies and she's in tears and then you have spider-man noir like come on kid it's okay like well you'll be able to get another one and it's like it's something where whenever a movie shows me oh shit i cared I didn't realize that I cared. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's always so impressive. And Penny Parker is a great example of that. Yeah. Especially since she doesn't get much screen time and, and, or much dialogue at all. And it's the way they make mm -hmm. you care for these characters. It's just, you're like, Oh shit. Like, yeah, this, I care about this character more than I thought I would, you know? Mm -hmm. So the final fight, there is one thing that you did say that, I kind of do agree with where you said like this fight was starting to lose you. I feel like there may have been a cut in this movie where they were like, Ooh man, that's actually probably going to be expensive. We probably shouldn't do that where I think they get rid of doc Ock so quickly because like they're lining it up where Peter B Parker, Gwen Stacy and miles Morales are all about to start fighting her. And she has this cool ass scene where she's climbing in between two buildings. She's actually, she's, whenever she got slugged in a row by all three of them, as they pull each other up on the web, I was like, fuck, this is so cool. Mm -hmm. And then she just gets hit by a bus. <laughs> I felt yeah. like that must have been so hard to try to get these three Spider-Man working in tandem together. All the animation work that was going into that. Doc Ock's arms, the insane amount of just 
detail that's going on in the background as the like the collider is going insane mm-hmm. i have to imagine that this was so hard to animate that they're just like okay we need to probably cut down this budget where can we cut and they're like what if we just have her get hit by a bus and we don't have to have a right. fight scene they're like well perfect okay have her hit by a bus perfect. yeah yeah i don't know if Oh, okay, so you're just assuming that they might have had like yes. some sort of extra cut. Okay, okay, I feel. Yeah, so I mean, that makes I don't sense think animated. I feel like in the screenplay, there might right. have been like an original draft where there was mm-hmm. going to be a fight, but as soon as they started getting into production, they're like, "Ooh, we need to start cutting things." Because that's the thing. I think I don't remember who said it or if it's just a general term. I think whenever people say that they're going to work on a project, like a large scale project, like with either a game, an album, or a movie, they're just like. Take what your plans are. Just accept that only 80% is going to be in question if it gets in. Right. I don't know if I wanted that. I'll be honest. I don't know if I'd wanted like a a more. I wouldn't either. Longer scene because it's like I thought it was already too long. It did start to lose me um, at the end. You're right. I don't know what it was. There's something about and I had the same problem. I know you love Infinity War, but there's something there's just something about a ton of fighting on screen and a ton of effects and a ton of this that and the third that just kind of it becomes noise yeah it becomes noise and it just i started to get really bored not really bored but i, just, I started to get bored so it's like because it's no i enjoy the person the person uh i like it when it's a little more personal i guess like these fights so uh when there's just a bunch of spider-man doing their thing that's why i like when like each spider-man has their own when it like shows each Spider-Man doing their own thing, it's just it's funny. Like when they all have their own quips while they're fighting these people, it's like that's what I like. But when everyone's just fighting each other, and now okay, everyone's swinging around and shit, and there's this big inanimate thing that doesn't have feelings that they have to shut down, and it's like oh okay, whatever. Like this is starting to get a little boring, you know. To be fair, that's kind of why I like the way that Spider Verse does it because. One, you have all the three main Spider-Mans fighting Doc Ock. And, like, the moment where they all swing together to bring themselves back up Mm -hmm. is just so cool and inventive that it no longer just becomes superhero punching each other. Right. right? It becomes something that is integral to who they are, Mm -hmm. like, as Spider-Man to be able to leverage that. Doc Ock being able to use her arms to climb through the buildings, that's fucking cool. So that's why I'm actually kind of happy that they, if they had that cut that I think would have been there, I'm kind of glad that they did that because I don't think I need any more creativity than that. And I think Spider-Verse, at least for the Spider-Man, they do really well with this action scene at the end because Penny Parker fighting the Scorpion, like that's actually pretty Mm. cool because like Mm. you really haven't seen a scorpion like that and you're fighting this robot that you haven't seen you have something that would only make that fight interesting because of who's involved and then you have spider pig jump in with an anvil which is something he could only do which is why i kind of don't like when he just starts punch fighting because it's like ah this actually isn't that fun like anyone can punch i would kind of wish that there would be more looney tune shit that he did to actually win this fight instead of just traditional punch kick exactly yep yep same same sentiment yep i agree with that wholeheartedly i think the ending of the fight and the beginning of the fight were great but there was just something in the middle or like and mind you i didn't finish it the other day so i've i've watched this like a couple of months ago there was just i remember being losing me just for i want to say just for like three minutes or two minutes um, mm-hmm. of the movie where it's like okay let's That's... start to wrap it up or whatever with spider-man noir though like that man cheats though because he fights so much like a 1920s drunk boxer that mm-hmm. this you can make this man fight literally anyone that's gonna be entertaining as hell so like that's that's almost cheating i don't think it was any of those spider-men that made me i think it was the it might have been the kingpin fight the kingpin fight where like yes. everything is like floating around and shit like I, it, from what i recall or like the jenner is going haywire or whatever the um, problem is is that that fight at some point just devolves into them punching each other and it's yeah. like spider-man not spider-man miles morales being able to turn invisible like that's something cool that is something that is integral to him you Mm. in the fight scene you need to make it so the characters having the fight it is unique to being like no one else could be having this fight unless you had these characters involved and that final fight almost fails a little bit because at some point miles morales is just punching and kicking like 
so that's honestly why it kind of feels more satisfying whenever he actually does the little hey thing because that's something only he could do no other spider-man could do that right 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 i do think they wrap it up though very well and i think everybody tells their story now i want to remember what ends up Mm -hmm. happening does everyone go to their own do they go back to their own dimension or like their own universe at the end Mm -hmm. nobody stays with miles correct okay all right yeah i mean i just i kind of forgot that end ending because i i just we just watched the the sneak what is it sneak peek clip of like the new spider verse yeah. and gwen's there so i'm like did she stay with him i forgot um but no she just kinda... so what happens with the ending uh miles beats kingpin the machine gets broken uh oh yeah. before that because i just want to mention it because i love it miles using the exact same sweep of the leg movement that peter b parker does on him and mm-hmm. he's like no no you're going back to your universe because i am the spider-man of this universe now you need to go back and mm-hmm. he just falls and he's like, not bad, kid. Like, it feels, oh, my God, I love that scene. Um, right. After that, Kingpin gets captured. Miles Morales is now Spider-Man. He's laying in bed. And that's when the, like, a dimension opens up in front of him. And you hear Gwen telling him, hey, Miles, what's up? Is th- that wait, is exactly that, where the trailer picks up. Is that how it ends? Yeah. Or is that how the new one begins? Or, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. All right, yeah. Totally yeah, forgot. Okay, so, it, so I guess the new one just leads right into the old one right so it just yeah starts off okay okay very cool very cool yeah because I, mm-hmm. I totally forgot about that there's only maybe like two things i want to touch on now mm-hmm. one is the fact that i love that this movie just keeps repeating get up spider-man talking yeah. about everything that is what people love about spider-man that pretty much just sums it up get up spider-man the fact that no matter what happens to him he is just always gonna keep getting up which even though people like that's the thing spider-man 3 is really fun to laugh at but i think probably the worst moment in that movie is when spider-man's getting beat to hell by sandman and then he doesn't get himself out new goblin comes out and bails him out like that is actually something that i think I actually legitimately hate because Spider-Man to me is just always the kid that he is always going to find a way out and it's always going to be like in a smart way. You're like, Oh crap, that's really inventive. So I'm always so happy that in Spider-Verse, I mean, to be fair, it's kind of cheating because Spider-Man is always going to find out another way out for Spider-Man. But even then miles morales still can prove for himself that he can take him down and even if it's just taking out kingpin using the touch that uncle aaron taught him it's just still Mm. something that i'm so happy that they understand spider-man he is always the person who is going to get back up even after he's just completely busted he is going to get back up yeah but also in a way it's like it's kind of like i said i always look at the that's very true but it's like damn like it's always up to spider-man to get back up like the people depend on him and it's Mm -hmm. like it's also like a tragic like a sad way of looking at it where it's like yeah no matter what happens to you spider-man you're you're always gonna get back up and you're always gonna do this over and over you know (laughs) your uncle's gonna die on you aunt may's gonna die you're accidentally gonna let gwen stacy's neck snap but you're gonna keep getting up oh my god oh my god (laughs) you know it's gonna be cool if they bring up if they bring to be honest if toby and and garfield are in are in no way home i don't really see i will eat my hat if they're not yeah bro i mean there's a lot of people there's people yeah i don't i don't know i don't know how they couldn't they they couldn't be in that movie because from what i heard they're only showing the press 40 minutes of the movie to review Wait, so like, oh, so I, they're I only hate that you said this shit i hate that you said this shit because we all know that movie's probably cracking a minute over tw- it's probably gonna crack over two hours and if they're only showing people that much fuck i don't want to watch this movie i really don't i was hoping that they would just be cameos because <laughs> i think a lot of times when it comes to hiding people in the cast like that's yeah. the thing they're um i was about to say the lawyers that's not right their unions tend to be really strict about how people are credited in a movie. Like you can't have people hidden in the cast unless they have like less than two words or something like that, which is like, for example, the office, Michael Scott was not listed on the credits in the final episode of the office because they have him say only two lines and they wanted to keep that a secret. So Mm. If you're telling me that they couldn't show people more than 40 minutes, that just makes you think, fuck, man, I, I don't want to watch this movie. But if it's more than half of the movie that they're in it, <sighs> damn it. 
You don't want it. You don't want. Wait, wait, wait. You don't. You want them just to be cameos? No. What I want is that I don't want to be given a reason to watch this movie. <laughs> you don't want to watch this movie? Oh, oh, oh! I see. I, I don't want to watch this movie, man. Why? Why not? Because it's MCU. Because I have this movie. <laughs> oh yeah, that's. Tr- oh yeah, yeah. I see. I see what you're saying. It'll be, it'll Dude, no matter out, what but... they do, I don't think that they can outdo Spider Verse because this movie's just going to th- be Spider Verse. I think that as well, and I just don't think. I think this is just a completely different movie, like just in, in every way to to these modern, you know, these live action Spider Man movies. Anyway, so I don't think, even if it does be like really, really good, I don't know if it's it'll be like top out Spider Verse. It's just completely different, you know. And you know, to- Toby's That's universe the is okay. They're cutting too close. Yeah, they're, they are. They are. Like whenever you start cutting too close, you open up comparisons, and when you do that, yeah. that's a bad move. Like, like let's right. talk about terrible game Days Gone. Like Days Gone opens up so closely to the original Last of Us, where mm-hmm. I'm like, do you realize how much you just fucked yourself over for the rest of this mm-hmm. game if you're trying to do this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct. They're both multiverse movies, so they're mm-hmm. gonna get comparisons. There's, there's gonna be multiple Spider-Man. So if they're, that's the thing. I don't. I already don't like Tom Holland that much. I really don't like how he's kind of G. Williger Spider-Man. I, I don't like it. So you already have one Spider-Man I don't like, and then two that I like. So then compare it to Spider-Verse, where I like all six of them. Like, yeah. it, this movie feels like it is so set up for failure that I just don't even want to watch it because I know everyone else is going to love this. They're going to love their nostalgia bait, and I'm going to recuse myself and instead talk shit from the background very quietly because if not, I know I will ruin this for everyone else. <laughs> right. I'm thinking, like, I wonder if they'll add, like, some – see, I don't know how this would even work. I don't think they'll do this, but if they add, like, some sort of, like, Spider-Verse mention into – no way home but i just don't know how that would work like how if the spider verse spider-man could be in it or if the ps4 spider-man could be in it but i just don't i just don't see that working at all i just don't know how that would work it'll be a cameo but how no no but i don't know how that would work okay sorry no, no, i mean not a cameo it'll be an easter egg where you see the miles morales suit like somewhere in the background oh yeah yeah probably something like that yeah um, or, or I mean, the rumor was they changed the voice actor, like they changed their his face, so because now they could they could have him as a cameo in No Way Home if they wanted to. Right? That's what I heard. I don't know. That's true. That is. I hear that shit, and I'm gonna break into the projectionist office if I see <laughs> PS4 Spider. No, sorry, sorry, Spider Man remastered. If I see Spider Man remastered PS5 yeah. Spider Man, yeah. I'm going to go into the projectionist and just start playing Spider Verse instead at gunpoint. <laughs> <laughs> i oh, will be man. there's something about that that just i don't want the gamers to have a win yeah. ever okay yeah yeah i agree, I agree. <laughs> no man it's, it's great we made this podcast like right at this moment because this is a great time to be a spider-man fan we have the spider-man 2 from insomniac we have spider miles morales came out this year we have the new spider-verse and no way home coming out you know it's just mm-hmm. a great time to be a Spider-Man fan. Dude, 2018 had Infinity War, Spider-Man just saying, I'm cold, Mr. Stark. Just, I don't feel so good. You had the yeah. Spider-Man PS4 game, and then you had Into the Spider-Verse, right? 2018. Yeah. Then it's now looking like this year and next year is going to be like, if you count the 12-month period, it's going to be a year where you have that movie, you have Spider-Verse 2, and then you maybe have Spider-Man 2. The, right. the game which right. you're not wrong jesus that's gonna be spider-man fans are eating good it's a lot of spider-man mm-hmm. they're eating good let's just hope it doesn't there's not too much you know <laughs> let's just hope it doesn't get old it's hard to imagine you know pre-20 what is it pre-2016 where there was no barely any good spider-man content you know and now we're eating really good yeah no fucking kidding i'm just glad yeah. that even with that deluge of spider-man content I got this movie out of it. That's the mm-hmm. biggest win I could have. Mm-hmm. And it, this one came out of nowhere. That's the, that's why it's so good because it just came out of nowhere. And it's like nobody expected it. It's like one of my favorite movies. You just don't expect it. It's from a studio you don't expect. It's from yeah. it's from this. You never thought this animated Spider-Man 3D animated Spider-Man would be like one of your favorite Spider-Man movies of all time. And here we are. Yeah. Just one thing I want to mention because I had mm-hmm. some notes, but not much kind of just like a guiding mm-hmm. line to remind myself in case I forgot. There's one thing that I love that the first time that Miles Morales goes into like the spider cave, whenever he's looking at the Spider-Man suit, his reflection is like around the neck area 
of the Spider-Man suit, but during the lead up to the Leap of Faith, when he looks at the suit, he is now looking eye to eye to it. And come on, that's just oh, that's wow. just cinema that's right there. To to, that's that's <laughs> like I I just don't know how these people do it. I really don't like it. Just stuff like that makes me think like hmm, maybe I could make a movie. And then I'm like I I stuff like that is like eh, probably not no. <laughs> I don't no, know no, no, about Maple, that. Maple. Here's the thing, though. You're good with a camera. You can see shit and line it up. All you really have to do is just understand the contrast between two yeah. images, and you'd be right in for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You doubt your you doubt yourself, but I've seen your photos. All right. You could easily do it if you did want to. And trust I me, I it. bought a camera that you told me and. God yeah. damn, I just always look at my camera and I'm thinking, I'll do that one day. And then you watch something like Spider-Verse and it's like, <laughs> I'm not capable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's even me, like, now, I'm like, I appreciate the kind words, but it's like, yeah, I, these are geniuses, especially these writers. They're just geniuses. Hmm. All right, now, just the one last thing that yeah. pretty much, it's just the only way we could have ended this off on. The little note at the end for Stan Lee and Steve Ditko and the fact that it just said, for letting us know we're not the only ones. Is that not just Spider-Man in general? Spider-Man is just this yeah. kid that lives in Queens, I think. Man, yeah. New Yorkers, if you're out there somehow listening to me, please crucify me later, okay? Uh, this <laughs> yeah. kid from Queens, the girl next door crush, going to school, the regular stress of being able to deal with school and life and friends and also being a fucking superhero on top of it. Is that yeah. not Spider-Man? And it just leads right into that quote. It's perfect. It's honestly the only way you could have ended this. Movie. I wholeheartedly agree. And yeah, I just, there's, I mean, there's a Spider-Man in all of us, I guess, as corny as that sounds. Yeah, we're all Spider-Man. And <laughs> that's what this movie is. We are, shows. we are, bro. That's why people love Spider-Man so much as opposed to every other superhero. Who the fuck is going to relate to Superman? This motherfucker that can't die, you know? Or... What are you talking about? I'm perfect. I relate to him a lot. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> There's a thing about <laughs> Spider-Man where it's like you just relate to him so much, and that's why he is one of the most liked characters on Earth. You say Spider-Man anywhere on Earth, and people will know who that is. And mm -hmm. I'm just so glad we got this movie out of it. <sighs> it's a good place to stop. What do you think? I agree, man. Edwin, it, it was great talking to you, especially at this time about this movie. Uh, it's been a long time coming. I wanted to do this podcast for a while. You know, I just love this movie so much. I'm glad to have you. And honestly, we'll figure out other topics that you'd like. And you of know, course, that's how it goes. You got to bring uh, me on for the Breath of the Wild spoiler cast. Ooh, you see about that. So what I'm actually <laughs> doing. <laughs> no, 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 no. So I don't know if you know this. Obviously, there's going to be a Last of Us hate cast because you know oh that I have Oh, my God. Yeah. So I now, have. Wait, is that. Is, are those all filled? No, so yes currently oh. it's only gonna be three people of me obviously <laughs> hating it Addie loving it and then we're gonna have sam who is gonna be kind of the person who's mixed on it you know maybe we'll change it out but if we would yeah, need think someone about who hates it. it as much as i do or someone who likes it a little less you know right but yeah sure sure if somebody somebody dipped just make sure to, to call me because i am ready for that discussion <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm the I'm the guy that's confused. I'm the guy that hates it one day and loves it the other day. I'm the guy I'm like <laughs> I'm like this was a really good fucking video game. And then on the other side I'm like, damn, this shit was so boring in some parts. I don't know if I like this shit. I don't that's just me like every other day. Uh, you know what Here, I mean? Here's the thing. We're probably gonna record it as we're playing it so it's probably going to oh. be an in process thing so in what? other words that would be fucking hilarious if you just had one day that we're recording here you're just like yo no man Addy's on the right track and when you're fucking stupid okay why didn't you like that shit <laughs> and then literally the next recording is like yo Addy I don't know why you're saying that shit okay I, that was yesterday this is today you're fucking stupid <laughs> you're fucking stupid Edwin was right this shit is trash <laughs> fuck Neil Druckmann fucking hate that dude <laughs> Bro, no, I have a lot to say about Last. If you have any other discussions, just let me know. If you want to do, if you want me to cameo in the Last of Us discussion cast, let me know. If someone drops out, let me know. I'm here of for course. any other podcast, man. It's always good to to have you. You're a great host, and you're a great yeah, podcaster. Yeah. So, uh, you know what I mean. I know you, you know don't like the, the. I know, I know. I can't. I'm sorry. I look. You all I can suck. do is you there. You stupid. thank you. 
You <laughs> stupid motherfucker, you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you it's su- like water. You suck at Halo, you <laughs> Oh, I really freak. do. Oh, <laughs> I love this. Oh, my God. This, I'm back home. It's just like hanging out with my family. <laughs> uh, no, right, really, so- it was nice talking to you, Edwin and... You know, Maple, since I know I already talked about the photography, is there anything that you want to pimp out to literally the eight people that I have? Because I'm pretty sure at least I, I got actually one because I mentioned Spider-Man. I actually will not do that. I do not want to pimp out nope. anything because, yeah, because I feel like I no, it let's just keep it a Spider-Man and I'm Maple and, okay. we're, you know, we're just people do, talking about Spider-Man, you know, I don't want to lose my thing. Yeah, you you don't take pictures. Wait, actually, no. Peter Parker does take pictures, though. Fuck. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I, no, it's not a secret. Of course, I take pictures. I just don't want to. No, pimp. no. I just would be out of place in this on this podcast. I just don't want. No, the thing is that I was gonna say we're all Spider Man, and we all know Spider Man doesn't take pictures. Take, and then I was yeah. like, oh wait, that joke doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, because he does. Oh my god! You know what? what? Okay, I just gotta say this real quick before we end yeah. up. Yeah. The lack of Jonah in this movie dude i forgot about that i wanted to bring that up earlier but how do we feel about wait the cameo though at the end was there a cameo at the end so in the spider-man meme thing jay jonah pops up as his old comic book form okay i mean old uh uh, cartoon form not comic book form yeah well i mean other than that i'm just talking about like in the movie like i feel like oh yeah whatever i feel like they could have done something because they're because the writing was so funny i think they could have they definitely could have done something with with jay jonah if they wanted to i have no doubt that he'll probably be in the sequel to be honest but Hmm. but yeah that's all i wanted to point out yeah i just forgot about that out of the this is what i want i would want peter b parker in his explanation of his origin story to show that he was getting fired and then you just have a clip of jay jonah going parker (laughs) that's all you need you don't need anything else (laughs) that's it just yeah 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 and like an introduction sequence or something yeah i know what you mean or like him just laughing in his face or something they're supposed to be like a, the laughing meme and then that's it they just cuts it. okay yeah that's it and then they start laughing and he cuts that's it and it cuts the next scene and, oh and then it God. cuts to him crying in the tub in the tub in the, in the tub i mean that would have been perfect oh my god Edwin, you should write these movies. No, I can't, dude. No, no, no. You, no, we'll be no, like the. We'll be like the. What do you say? The Phil brother. What? Are, what are their names? We could do that. We could do that shit. That shit is easy, actually. Let's do it. Wait, well, the Phil brothers? What? Oh, the, what, oh what Phil is, Lord and Chris Miller. Yeah, whatever. Phil, Phil and Miller, and then we dude, could, I, we could be the new generation of that shit. Dude, I swear, if I ever had half of the talent that they did, I would not I be know. here. <laughs> I know. I know. All right, a, a good place to end it. Yeah, good place to add the good break crate for you degrading yourself. All right. Exactly. <laughs> End card. Hey, look at you. You got to the end of the episode. From episode zero to the day that I finally get lazy and cancel the show, a big thank you to Joey Rawlings for providing the perfect name for the show. Be sure to always give him thanks, either out loud as you're listening to this, or you can just send him a thank you tweet at boogeyman117 underscore. That's Boogeyman117, I-E, instead of Y, double O. Be sure that it's an underscore, not a dash, 117.